London's LBC 97.3. 0870 90 90 973. Nick Abbott. Well, the sun had its hat on today. What a day. And it's all thanks to global warming. Hip hip? Yeah. Hip hip? Yeah. Hip hip? Yeah. <laughs> Not quite warm enough, though. I mean, when you were in the sun, it was beautiful. But uh, out of the sun, still a little bit nippy. I don't think that the people in this country are doing their bit in order to further the cause of global warming. Keep your TVs on standby overnight, always. And always choose a car with a high carbon um, dioxide expiration coefficient. Or whatever that is. Well, I don't know. Do you know, the people buy big cars and they, um, it hurts the ground more than uh, light cars. Like that, Alex, like that giant pile of car you've got sitting outside. That thing. Oh, burning, up, burning a hole in the sky it is. It's very yeah. environmental. I can't hear you. Very much environmentally Which, which mic are you speaking on? This is the guy who's in charge Stop of the... me grief. <laughs> 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 well, I'll leave you with work experience. <laughs> The only reason you're here is that everything runs smoothly and you can't even get yourself on the air. Yeah, right. You are a shower. I'll go screenless, just as Ian would, because that's the way he'd like it. Hello, LBC. Hello. Yes, sir. Am I on the air? It sounds like you. Oh, I didn't really want to be. Oh, um, great, OK. I didn't really want to be. Why would he call? Um, I'll ask. Why would you call? Sorry? Why would you call if you didn't want to be on the air? Because I didn't know we were coming straight to air. Ah, oh, straight to air, yeah. So, who did you want to talk to? Well, I wanted to talk to somebody about the signal. The signal? Yeah, the signal you get on your, on your car radio. It's breaking up. Is it? Are you, um, is there a building in the way? No, it's, it's, I make the drive every morning of a weekday, and I listen to Mr Ferrari on the way in. Of course. And then just lately, what's been happening is the signal's breaking up. I can't hear him properly. Right. Um, get a better radio? Get a better car. Get a better car. There you go. Go the whole hog. OK, thanks very much. OK, well, there's uh, another uh, one that I've helped. Sorry, Anna, sorry, I'm helping customer. people over here, huh? Yeah, that's right. Another satisfied customer. So have you heard that they're going to put X ratings on TV programmes now? Really? Do you remember this um, a little while ago? Oh, I think it was uh, Channel 4, ITV, something like that. This is going back a long time now. They had um, pink triangles why they would have a pink triangle i have no idea but on I mean, a that's, tv series uh, i think that's what they did uh, pink triangles on uh, programs with a sensual nature in order to warn the audience that they might be a little hot uh, panting action what this actually did was warn teenagers that you'd actually tuned into the right channel and late at night as a teen, you'd be flipping around to see if you could come across one of these uh, triangles, because no matter what the programme was, and, all, and the triangles al always were on the worst rubbish, but it meant that if you stick around long enough, you'll see some hot naked flesh. Mm, stay tuned. Exactly. Almost completely the opposite to, the, uh, to what they had intended. They, they meant it as a warning. Mm. Do not watch this programme, because your eye eyes will be assailed with, uh, you know, heaving flesh. But it was, didn't come as a warning at all. It came as a recommendation. And now they're going to do it again. Uh, Basil. Hello. I was driving to work this morning, and um, I was listening to Nick Ferrari on the radio. Yeah, get a new car. So um, what are they going to do now is they're going to put X ratings on um, TV programmes. Parents are to be warned whether TV programmes, internet sites, films and video games are suitable for their children, said... Um, fingernail muncher Gordon Brown. Oh, are they going to put, like, a, like a traffic light system like they have done with food? I think that's exactly what they're going to do, yeah. Mr Brown said broadcasting regulator Ofcom had agreed to draw up common labelling standards to provide information to parents across a range of media. Um, manufacturers are expected to be made to preface their products with traffic light style warnings. Hey, you got it right in one. There you go. Well, there's a boy who doesn't even read the newspapers. I know. It's a complete guess. I haven't quite got the uh, hang of those uh, traffic light things. They just look like, um... Um, well, I, I don't really get it either. I think, you know, green is completely healthy, so, you know, eat this. 
Uh, but it isn't really, because if you look at the salt content of sliced ham, for instance, if you have two side by side, one will have 0 0.9 grams per hundred mm. and will get a green label, and one, the next one, will have one gram per hundred and get a red label. How does that work? I don't know. Is it just for salt, then? Salt? No, there's all sorts of things. Salt and fat and... Oh. I've run out. <laughs> salt and fat. Sugar. Carbohydrate, sugar, I suppose, yeah, that's another one. But there's such an infinitesimally small difference between uh, eat as much as you like and stop right there mm. that it kind of makes the whole thing a bit silly. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I'm halfway through this story, but I'll take these. Uh, uh, hi, hello? Hi, Nick, it's uh, Dorinda impersonator. Is it? Yes. Uh, Is there I'll something wrong with your radio? How's the reception? No, it's fine. Oh, great. Although, or this week, I have been getting a lot of pirates uh, interfering. Oh, yeah, pirates. Mm-hmm. Any of this? Yeah, a lot of that. I think me and you uh, got off to a bad start, so I've been wrecking my brain today thinking uh, how I can redeem myself. Okay, go ahead. Wow me. Come on now, but sing with me. Hey, little hen, when, when, when we... His, uh, oh, it's just those going to him, he dropped away. Anyway, I'll continue with this. He's been racking his brain all day long. And that's what he came up yeah. with. Maybe you should get a job, or... Yeah, that often helps. Or something. Just take a bucket and uh, a, a bucket of soapy water out into the street and scrape some graffiti off walls. You know, do something useful with your life. If that's all you could come up with, having racked your brains all day long, I mean, a really... South Croydon. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah, I, did, I did some mock sats today. You did what? Mock sats. Mock sats? Which is like practice ones. Sats. What does that stand yeah. for? Uh, oof, oof, uh, it's like some sort of exam that the whole... Oh, good does. grief. You don't even know what it stands for? Do you know what it stands for? Uh, oh, no, but I didn't take it. You failed this test, and presumably the, uh, the mock sat that you sat this afternoon. <sighs> Kids today, they're an absolute shower. Hey, by the way. Yeah? What are six eights? Here's one in, um, Highgate. Hello, Anthony. Hi. Anthony. Anthony, hi. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. Uh, I didn't realise I was coming straight through tonight. Yep, yeah, it's screenless for the first half hour, just as Ian would intend. Oh, uh, how did you know it was Anthony, then? Because it says so on my little screen. It's modern technology, mate. Oh, very good. That's, that's excellent. Listen, my girlfriend last week, she had two tattoos done. Really? A W on each cheek of her bottom. Here is one in Norfolk. <laughs> Wiki woo. Put the needle in the record so the drum beat goes like this. All that scratching is making me itch. How about you? You know this one, do you? Yo, I do, yeah. I can't remember what the, the title is, though. Unless I'm actually looking at the album, I can never remember what music is. Oh, oh. sorry. Far side is the right answer. She keeps on passing me by six eight forty eight. Huh? Six eight to forty eight, by the way. Oh that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, correct. Wimbledon. Six eight. Hi. Hello, Wimbledon. Hello, who's this? Who did you call? Yes, I did call actually. Yo, is this Nick Abbott? Yes, sir. Where's Ian Lee? Ian Lee is in, it's hard to believe this, but he's in Los Angeles hanging out with uh, David and Victoria. Did he go for the, to hang out with them the whole week? I'm really curious about this. Or who, jealous. Did, well, yeah, of course. I mean, who doesn't want to go out and hang out with uh, uh, Victoria? Not so much. But wouldn't you like to have a drink with David? Yeah. Huh? I mean, the stuff that that man's been through, it's, he, he's virtually living a, a Walt Disney cartoon life. Yeah, okay. And wouldn't you like to, um, s soak up some of their hospitality? I mean, the bloke's minted. All oh, right. I mean, he'd probably leave you with a watch or something as a goodbye present. Oh, right, and definitely. Mm. Well, even without that, aren't you interested? Um... Huh? <sighs> it's only Posh and Bex, isn't what, it? What? Only Posh and Bex. Only the, probably the most famous couple in the whole wide world. Uh, with the possible exception of Brad and Angelina. Brangelina. Oh, yeah. Is that or, what they called, Dan? Yeah. Or, <laughs> or Tom Cruise and... What's her name? See? Yeah. So he's beat them. I can't even remember what, the, what her name is. Katie, Katie Holmes. That's right. So there's, there's maybe three 
uh, 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 couples in the whole world that are as famous as them, and you're not remotely into... What does interest you? I'm curious, because you don't like football, you don't like cars. What do you like? Um, I'm a big fan of uh, sitting in front of the TV and watching, like, 24 and Lost and all that lot. Prison Break? Um, I haven't got around to that yet. Oh, I'm doing you've got two to get things at a time. Prison break. Um, yeah, that's next on the list. You can only carry two stories in your head at one time. Yeah. Good man. It's seven fifteen. Here's travel. Nick Abbott. We shall begin by being absolutely frank with each other. Frank, do you mind if I call you David? Of course not. Yes, David. Uh, I've just been out. I've got myself a digital radio. Yeah. Uh, I've just got into the LBC ninety-seven point three, and uh, there's some. I've just a load of noise coming out. What's, what, what am I doing wrong? You've got a digital radio. Yes. You've tuned it to LBC 97.3. Correct. And there's noise coming out. Yeah, listen. Hey, that's groovy. Hey. But I'm the only thing on LBC 97.3 at the moment. <laughs> uh, so right. I don't know. I would return to the shop or get a new car. All right, here's one in um, Clapham. Hello, Tom. Hi, how you doing? Tom, I'm alright, thanks. Good, good. Uh, am I live on the air? I'm not. Yes, straight to air, yes. Oh, right, okay. Well, basically, I just wanted to share with you that uh, I was a little disappointed when I heard that Ian Lee wasn't going to be on. Of course. I have to say, in the preceding 18 or so minutes that you've been on, I, I believe I've actually probably laughed more than in Oh, okay. <laughs> Stop uh, attacking the host when he's not here. Attack him when he is here, and he'll cut you off at the knees. Um, you know, nice thought and all, but I can't allow it. Uh, Swanley. Hello, Dave. How did you know my name was Dave? <laughs> many times am no, I going no, to be I'm asked that? I've only ever run once, and that was about a year ago. We're watching you, Dave. You are, aren't you? God, oh, blow, is there a camera in here? Listen, I want this, I've had to stop listening to Steve Allen in the morning. Why is that? He's so negative, he slags everybody off, doesn't he? Oh, but it's funny, though. It isn't. I get into work and I start slagging everybody off. Is it funny? No. You're smiling. I'm not. You are. I am told you. I told I, you we're I, watching you. I, I, I can't believe it. It's a sheer poison. <laughs> <laughs> but funny. So that's like two negatives in a row on the Nicky Abbott show. And it's not even my show. Here's one in uh, Norwich. Mm, hello. Hello there. I said Ross Patzel from Norwich. You just said that, didn't you? I did, yes. <laughs> How you doing, Nick? Nice I'm all right. You. I'm just thinking about the competition that you're running tonight. Is the answer Ghostbusters 2? Yes, it is. Would you like to go for the car? Here is Sir Hersham. Hello, David. Hello. I've got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. I've got gotcha. you. You've got me. Go I've got gotcha, you, Nick. What does that mean? Hello, David. How you doing? I'm all right. Turn I'm the radio sad. down. I've just found it. Oh, oh, that's one of my questions. Oh, oh, this is the bloke with the radio. Right. Yeah. See, oh, that, it's, it's supposed to be, um, idiot-proof DAB <laughs> radio. You just tune to it, and, and as soon as it comes up in the window, <sighs> that's what you're listening to. Yeah, no, but it wasn't. It wasn't. But I promise you. It right. was, there was music, but now I've retuned it again. I've gone back, and then I've retuned it again, and then I heard your delightful voice. I would definitely take it back to the shop for a full refund. <sighs> <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> All right, cheers, mate. <laughs> Thanks for the update, mate. Uh, right, screen us for the first half hour, and uh, and then from that moment on, oh, blimey, I don't know, usual rubbish. Uh, Gary, Gary. Hello. Yes, Gary. Yeah, is it Ghostbusters two? What is this? Am I missing something? Are we actually running a competition, or are they just having a laugh? Having a laugh. Oh right. Whoa, you've got to have a laugh, <laughs> ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. LBC. Hello? Yes. How are you going? Not too bad, thank you. Good. There's the pleasantries out of the way. Oh, am I on there, Mike? Yes, I, it is. I just Straight to, to it. That, that fella slagging Ian, um, um, Steve Allen off. He ain't allowed to start slagging Steve Allen off. He's one of the best things on the radio. Absolutely. You know? But he can get up that early in the morning and still be funny is with some exactly. There's no man of metal. For anybody slagging off Steve Allen, he's one of the best things on LBC. Well, you're all good, but he's one of the better ones, definitely. Right. Well said, that man. Not a problem. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. Here is uh, Wimbledon again. No, he's one of the better ones, definitely. Turn your radio down. Is it Ghostbusters 2? <laughs> I suppose I'll get that all night long now. Hello, Steve. Hello there. I'm, I'm just calling up about the Hilo auction. Yes. Question. Yeah, is it, is it Ghostbusters 2? Is that what uh, is going on here? No, it's, uh, Ian did uh, a prank to the, those quiz TV shows. And that was his answer every time. 
Hello, LBC. Hello. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm on the air, yeah? Yep, it's... Uh, oh, it's um, Jason in Barking. I phoned last night. I've got... Um, I've had to change my number, just in case you need to know. Righto. Um, when are you going to get a permanent slot? I've got a permanent slot. You can always catch me Saturday nights between 10 and 1. Oh, you have? On this channel? 10 till 1, Saturday nights. Write it down okay. in your uh, radio diary. OK, then. And uh, can I just um, let everyone know out there to st just stop moaning and just think how well off you are? Yeah, exactly. Stop whining. Here is, um, Chelsea. Posh's Chelsea. Basil. <laughs> Don't know it. It was weak, whatever it was. Sounded like one of those, um, one of those sort of droney bands, each member of which is wearing a checked shirt. You know, one of those droney bands that comes out, for, uh, comes from America, probably around Seattle. Ooh, there they go. Here is Catford. Trixie. Oh, Trixie. Hi. Hello, Trixie. Um, is your name really Trixie? Oh, you'll have to, you know, it's up to you to decide, my dear. Listen, if I told you I make really great scrambled eggs, yeah. and I have uh, a few little baby piglets running around in the garden. Piglets? Would you come round for breakfast? I, I haven't got an abattoir. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are we going to eat them, then? That's, yes, but, but Abbott... Oh, never mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, right, it was like a oh, joke. Oh, God, pull the other one. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't had a woman up yet. You know what? That's right. Yeah. yeah so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd break it, and uh, Ghostbusters 2, Pradeep, and all that. <laughs> how are you? Uh, thanks for putting your foot in there, uh, Trixie. That's right. Are you going to come round for brekkie, then? S stopping the rot. Uh, for what? For uh, scrambled egg and bacon? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you trying to do? Kill me over here. I'm trying to uh, get my cholesterol down, not up. No, no, no. Oh, well, I'm trying to get my cholesterol down as well. I thought if you shared the breakfast, it would keep it down. Uh, I'll, um, I'll come round for porridge. Porridge and uh, a cup of boiling water with some lemon squeezed in it. I've got plenty of porridge as well. That's the manly way to start the day. It is, and no salt. <laughs> Really? No, a little bit of sugar, though. I mean, let's not go uh, oh, no. overboard. No, 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 jam. I like jam. Jam? Yes, as long as it's got lots of fruit in it. You know what's excellent is um, a, a jam and fried egg sandwich. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Try it and then thank me later. OK. I'll, I'll call you back on that. But it has yeah. to be uh, not runny because that would be disgusting. You ha have to cook the yolk so yeah. that it doesn't run all over the Does it the turn jam. out a bit like a pancake or something? Uh, no, we don't fry the whole thing. Just fry the egg. Just fry the egg, yes. And, so does it and put turn it out in... like a sort of a pancake with something sweet on it? Well, I suppose it... Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. I'd like that. It's, okay, a yeah. it's a sweet pancake sandwich. Yes, exactly. I'll have to call you back and let you know what it's like. I literally can wait. Thanks a lot, Trixie. Bye. ta -ta. Here is, um, this bloke again. Nick is the big mini. Here is, uh, Tufnell Park. Oh, ho, 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 Heath. All right, uh, Nick. John. Yeah, um, do you think it would be a really good idea if Arnie was our new Prime Minister? Because I've been thinking about it. Gordon Brown bites his fingernails too much. Yes. And then the other bloke's like Tony Blair. And have you, have you seen Arnie do, do his speeches? You should look look him up on YouTube, and he starts putting in quotes from Terminator and stuff in. <laughs> really? So he goes, "We're gonna we're gonna terminate those taxes," and, and everyone everyone's jumping up and down in California. Thinking yeah, it's great. thinking it's great. Yeah, he uh, he opens the speech with, "Hi, honey, how are you?" <laughs> <laughs> That's just something uh, intrinsically funny about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Even if he was beating you up, you'd be laughing. All right, so uh, you've certainly given us something to think about. Thanks a lot, John. Can I have a, on the sound of it? Absolutely no. not. No way. What do you think this is? Uh, like playing me like a puppet, he is. Uh, so uh, we're going to go away for the new news, uh, after which I'll be back. And I was looking for that. Uh, I was thinking, I must have that sound effect somewhere, but I don't, so I'll have to do this. Hasta la vista, baby. Hello. Nick Abbott. Affirmative. I'll uh, get through this um, X ratings on TV thing because this is quite interesting. They're going to try this again. They, I remember they did that um, much uh, earlier, like decades ago. You know, when you think of something, and um, I guess this is not uh, true for you guys. How old are you? Like 12 or something? Yeah, before my time. Didn't answer the question. Uh, 20. Okay, stop right there. 
so you won't remember this. But, um, okay, when you uh, grow up, you'll um, notice that you will be having a conversation with someone and you'll try and remember when it was, and uh, you'll start off with uh, ten, and then you'll start adding decades. And you go, oh, no, no, it was probably twenty years ago. And no, it was thirty years ago. And once, the, and you will notice the first time you can remember something when you were, uh, you know, doing uh, something in the past when you were sort of more or less grown up, and you will be stunned that it was thirty years ago. It's even more shocking than birthdays because birthdays, you know, they're coming. But when you have a memory of something and you put a date on it and the, the decade is uh, begins with a three, that's a bit of a shocker. Forty years ago, that you can remember something that you were doing 40 years ago. That hasn't actually happened to me yet, but um, I think I oh, need to sit down and a nice cup of tea. Here's one in Langley. Dion. Hello, Nick. Dion. Yeah, I was supposed to be off this afternoon, but got off, stood down. Off what? I was supposed to go to Peru. Oh, God, it's this bloke again. <laughs> you know, but... Uh, yeah, a secret it, government it, mission, you're part of uh, MI6, which, uh, and you're going to Peru on uh, a, a mission that you can't tell anybody about, which is why you're calling a radio station to tell us yeah, all about it. Yeah, but it, it. it does. Yeah. I'm huh? only telling you what's in the news. What's in the news? Uh, about what we do. What do you do? Sit at home and uh, twiddle your thumbs and fantasise about a more exciting life. Here's one in Biggin Hill. Hello, Gary. Hello, Nick. Gary. I'm not down to Peru. Yeah, good uh, man. Talking about um, 30 years ago, this is partly what I was going to talk about. Um, well, ye yesterday you said about um, you started eating meat again, didn't you? Yeah. Um, and you said it's giving you more of a ruddy complexion. A ruddy complexion and I smell like bacon, yeah. Well, I've been, where, where the 30 years comes in, I've been vegetarian about 30 years now. And uh, I've got a ruddy complexion. From being a vegetarian, I think. In fact, it's, it's often too ruddy. From if being a vegetarian? Right? But vegetarians, uh, I know this uh, well, from personal experience, look wane. That's exactly what everyone says, but I'm, if anything, I'm slightly overweight. I've, I've got a slightly red, ruddy complexion. Do you drink a lot? Uh, might be the red wine, I suppose. Right, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, another thing is, um, let's say that vegetarians are always ill. I, I have not had, it must be close to a record, I've not had one day off work in 30 years. Oh, well, aren't you a brave little soldier? I mean, I struggle to work with... It's not much of being brave, I just <laughs> haven't really felt ill. Huh. I feel ill all the time, like constantly. There's always something wrong with me, but I still struggle to work anyway. Oh. Which is just an indication of how poor I am. The other theory I have, because I think you've mentioned it, um, um, the greenhouse effect you've said that it could be or other people have said as well caused by the amount of methane in the atmosphere yeah cows Ca exactly so we could say that, that, that the meat eaters are probably destroying the planet because if it wasn't for eating meat we wouldn't have all the billions and trillions of cows being well bred. no if uh, if everybody turned vegetarian then we then we wouldn't be killing cows so much anymore it'll we'll be vegetarian and four by fours it's uh, yeah vegetarians and four by fours are probably the people that are actually killing the planet <laughs> it's your fault mate but thanks for, uh, you know, thanks for doing or whatever you can. Why did you originally turn veggie? Oh, I don't know. I was, I was about um, 17, and uh, it was about 1976, and uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, exactly, which is kind of what, more or less, what I did. I was working in a meat factory, and it really turned me off meat. So all this uh, time later, don't you wonder why you're still vegetarian? No, it's... it's I don't know what it, uh, it, well, I don't like the thought of the an animal cruelty nowadays either. Gradually, that sort of um, yeah. But what if they uh, uh, lived a happy life gambling amongst daisies? I wish they would, but um, no, I couldn't. I couldn't. I, there's something about it now. I, I, it might be um, a mental problem I have, but I can't see meat as, as appetising. Oh, go on, mate, give um, it a go. Have a I nice. Could, have I, a, I, buy. Um, walk down the luncheon meat aisle in the supermarket. Could, buy yourself some sliced ham. And put it underneath a poached egg <laughs> on a piece of toast, and thank I, me later. All right. I, I couldn't possibly. Uh, to me, uh, any spawn meat would be like eating, um, you know, dog, dog muck or something. I just couldn't <laughs> physically do it. I'd be sick. Right. Okay. Well, avoid the dog muck <laughs> aisle in Sainsbury's. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Gary. Really. Uh, I feel ill now. Here is uh, White City, Sarah. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? I'm all right, thanks. I think it's been a long time since I've spoken with you. Oh yeah. I think last time I was trying to take my dog into the movie theater. 
It uh, doesn't ring a bell, but then nothing ever does. Okay, never mind. Anyhow, I'm calling because um, just for a bit of dating advice to do with makeup. Um, wait, are you married or not? No. No, okay. So, like, when you go out on a date with a girl, is it more attractive if, she, if she's wearing makeup or if she's not wearing makeup or if she does that sort of wearing just, just a little bit of makeup that it looks like she's not wearing any makeup, etc.? Well, let's have a show of hands. In fact, um, turn the mic on and l let's go around the table. I think it very much depends on what you look like. What do you look like, Sarah? Um, I don't know. I'm short. I've got curly hair. I've got a MySpace page. My picture's up on there. Yeah, don't tell anybody what it is, because you're just a, <laughs> a, a, people, a, a queue of freaks desperate to be your friend. There are already a lot of freaks that are my friends. Be honest, Sarah. Do you look better with or without? I don't know. In the summer, I that think I like look with, better um, without. But in the winter, like just a little bit, I think better with. Like I just like just a little bit of foundation. But in the summer, like when you're just sort of nice and bronzed and stuff, um, yeah, I can go just with a little bit of lip gloss. Yeah, me too. Um, no, but how do you like like what when you look for a woman? What sort of like what do you look for? I don't. Guys? <laughs> Girls have to have makeup on. It just makes them look better looking. Oh, come on. Yeah. Well, so what about first bit. thing in the morning? Uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 the ruddy cheek complexion, the first thing in the morning, they come uh, out of bed, makeupless. Mm hmm. And you're not remotely interested. You think, ah! Really? Well, well, what are they thinking at the time? I mean, look at you. But no it's offense. Lady Alex there. <laughs> yes. What does he look? I saw his MySpace picture, and if it's him, he looks quite cute. So I was wondering, like, what sort of women he goes for. Well, I mean, whose picture did you put up there, Alex? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which which Hollywood star did you yeah. use? Yeah. Um, Colin Farrell. Or <laughs> <laughs> um, I no, I I like makeup. I quite sometimes I depending on the woman, I actually quite like, you know, almost over the top makeup. Really? Like yeah. the hoary look? Yeah, the bordering <laughs> on the hoary look. If it, if, it, oh, no. if it makes you look prettier, then use it. There you go, sir. That's my policy. All right, well, thank you so much for the advice. Do everything you can to look as little like you do as possible. All right. Okay. I'm helping people, Anna. Here is Barnsley. Hello, Louise. Hi, Nick. How are you? I am all right, thanks. Good. Um, I think all women look better with makeup on, including me. So. Well, you know what? <laughs> Blokes would probably look better with makeup on because you cover the spots yeah. and they look. Uh, I mean, not not uh, you know lipstick and uh, eyeliner and so on. But if you uh, yeah, if you go on TV, for instance, they uh, or you get your picture taken professionally mm. for radio uh, mug shots and so on. Yeah. Then they often have um, a makeup artist who will come in and cover all your your blotches and your spots, and they'll make your face look an even colour. Yeah, that's as good. opposed to eye. But before I started eating meat, I don't know if it's still the case, but I used to have panda eyes, like mm. little, white circles around my eyes that made them look like uh, well, I was dead, it's basically, terrible. like I'd uh, just been uh, <laughs> you know pulled off the slab. <laughs> And um, sort of blotchy and red, uh, and uh, eating meat now has made me look red all over. Mm. Vegetarians always look ill to me. Yeah. Well, if, if you want to uh, look at um, people who are on the verge of death, go to a health food store. <laughs> That's where they go. Hey, I was stood outside a health food store, and there was someone stood there who worked there, and she was smoking cigarettes. Well. <laughs> so it can't be that good for you. <laughs> Yes. Um, anyway, the red triangle thing that you were talking about. Yeah. That's sort of like what Channel 5 used to do, but they'd do it before the programme was on. Like, you know when you go to a cinema and it comes up with a big rated yeah. whatever? Mm -hmm. That's like what Channel 5 used to do. And no, but th whatever. this used to be on the screen at all times while the programme was on. So you'd be flipping around and then a, a film that you would normally go by because it looked like rubbish would have this little triangle. And I'm sure it was a pink triangle, wasn't it? Well, maybe red, and my TV was on the fritz. <laughs> but, uh, and that would arrest you right in your tracks, because you think there would be a little, uh... <laughs> if, if not right now, then, uh, you know, if you stick around for a couple of hours, you might, uh, catch a peek. Yeah, teenagers, I bet that was great for them. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, but if I do that again, that's probably what's going to happen again. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. I'll give you the full story, uh, a little bit later. They're not silly, are they, TV people? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I don't think it's the TV companies. It's, um, it's Gordon Brown who's, uh, trumpeting this. It's his fault. <laughs> it's his fault that people are going to want to watch the fight that even more. Well, that's what I would think, yes. I mean, if you... Now we have, um, a, a, a hundred different channels at our disposal, if you've got satellite or cable, then, um, you, you know, flipping around is, uh, is a competitive sport now, whereas, uh, back in... E it were grand when I were allowed. One channel, that's all we had. And the, uh, the youngest in the house was the remote control. And if anything, uh, untoward or unseemly came on, like, uh, you know, animals doing it with each other on, a, on a, one of those Attenborough programs, you know, a lioness and a lion would be, uh, lying in the grass, and then the lion would insert his lionhood. <laughs> and then my mother would say, we don't want to watch this, do we? Which was my cue to get up and change the channel. Oh. Or just rip the TV from the wall and throw it out the window in an emergency. Oh, I don't want to watch the fight that with my parents anyway. Yeah, exactly. A, de <laughs> a deathly hush would descend on the room and I would turn uh, the bright to crimson that I was describing earlier on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, the I same colour that uh, Alex Ferguson's nose is. <laughs> I think till 11 o'clock, though, you know what to expect on most channels, don't you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I do. And uh, um, whatever channel you tune to, it'll be. Boring! Mm. Or a rip-off, as uh, Channel 5 have just uh, admitted that people who won their uh, little quiz, they made them up. I That's unbelievable. That years, <laughs> Louise, I've, I've got to go for the, uh, the travel right now, so hang on, all right? All right, mm OK, it's LBC 97.3. Here's travel with Amanda Redmond. Thanks, Nick. Well, if you're heading... Affirmative. So the, um... Channel 5, yes, uh, the latest company to uh, fall flat on their face over this uh, phone rigging thing, which has taken in so far... Have you been uh, reading about this, Louise? Yeah. Taken in ITV, the um, the pop idol thing, which has just all ha had a, a big shake-up, hasn't it? I was hearing that in the in the main news at uh, seven o'clock. Um, Louis Walsh out. Good. I, I didn't. Good, that's I just, like him. No, there's just something creepy about him. It's just yeah. really kind of unpleasant. Made my skin crawl just looking at the man. No offence to the man, you know, but uh, just really v vile kind of ugh, just, just like shudder when you look at him. <laughs> and I don't mean to be insulting when I say that. Yeah, and Kate Thornton, it was, uh, and, and it was put like this, Kate Thornton is moving on to front other programmes, mm. which is a euphemism, isn't it? I Are mean, um, uh, which is, you know, what happened to me at, uh, at Virgin. I moved on to front other programmes. They insisted on it. <laughs> <laughs> you first of the you've been fired, though. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> fired. Yeah, it makes me laugh. If I could sort of publicity thing that they're coming out and saying it, but it looks a, makes them look bad at the same time. And what? it's like, oh, we might take Strictly Come Dancing off, so tune in and see if we've got Strictly Come Dancing on next week, which they will have. Well, they won't stop doing it because there's too much money involved, yeah. and so they'll uh, they'll take a broom and clean their house or tell us that they have they'll just promise uh, with their fingers crossed um extra double time that they won't do it again and then they'll continue to uh do it I mean, it's been going on for years though i mean especially like what Charles five admitted that they've made up winners i bet they've been doing that for years because how stupid would you look if you were in a game show all morning or whatever and you were saying oh you can win this really good play ice how easy. And, and no one could get the answer. Yeah, no yeah. one wins. It would make your uh, your viewers seem foolish. Yeah, and no one would want to watch it or in. Mind yeah. you, it's, uh, it's, it's actually worse if they've alre already chosen the winner and they're still asking you to ring in. That's oh, actually yeah. worse, isn't it? Yeah, that's Because that's, that's just flat-out cheating, really. Yeah. I mean, that's just, well, it's worse than that. It's stealing. Yeah, it is. But anyway, they, they won't stop doing it, I, abso I promise you, because every um, new, new TV programme that goes past the commissioning editor has to have some element of phone-in um, about it, because uh, otherwise they'll just say no. Yeah, and that's where all the money is. It's, uh, it's uh, certainly where a, a lot of the money is, yeah. And commissioning editors are like that because nobody wants to make a mistake. If they make a mistake and a, a show costs a million pounds and nobody watches it, then the commissioning editor is an idiot. If they make a mistake and nobody watches it but it still makes a profit, no problem. Yeah, he's fantastic. So you live in Barnsley, Louise. That must be awful for you. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I can't help it. I was born here. 
Well, and when are you planning on getting out? Um, I don't know. I quite like it. It's quiet and little. Little? I thought it was this great sprawling mess. Um, Isn't not when you know it, it's not. I, ca I couldn't get lost. Like, I went to London and I got lost within, like, five minutes. Well, and I had a map. Londoners get lost in five minutes in London. London, <laughs> London wasn't built to be um, an easy place to get around. London was sort of grew organically, unlike um, American cities, which are set out like grids for the car, and uh, streets will be will have uh, you know uh, names like First Street and Second Street, so you know precisely where you are. It doesn't make it a more interesting place to be. London is a more interesting place to be just because of that sort of uh, the, in the organic way in which it's. Um, you know, when the fire came, they were going to do that. They were going to uh, set out London like Paris, all yeah. avenues and everything was going to be square and so on. But I think that, uh, I can't remember, wasn't it Wren who was going to do just that? Christopher Wren. And then they didn't have the money or the wherewithal, or they couldn't be bothered or something like that. or They, they couldn't figure out how to buy everybody's property because they were going to have to raise the whole, th bulldoze basically all of London and start again. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> Well, it was all burnt down, Louise, at the time. <laughs> and, it, you know, it was just wooden sheds. It wasn't the, uh, you know, the magnificent edifices we see uh, before us today. Yeah. You know, there wasn't a gap on every corner. Um, uh, but they couldn't figure out how to buy each individual person's little plot of land. Mm. Or they couldn't afford it, or people started moaning and complaining and something like that. So we're stuck with the uh, higgledy-piggledy nature of the town that we uh, love today. It'd be boring, though, if you could find it. Your way around properly. Well, sat, sat navs wouldn't be uh, quite the very thing, would they? Yeah. Every yeah. other car wouldn't have sucker marks on its window. <laughs> we were on the tube, and we weren't even sure if we were on the right tube. <laughs> well, that's uh, again. Uh, I've, I and everybody else who lives in London has been there too. <laughs> so. Anyway, Louise, do do all you can to get out of that town because in thirty years' time, if you don't, you'll still be there. Yeah. And, and then you'll be sorry. <laughs> okay, best of luck, all right. Sounds next. Ta ta. Um, Here he is, Crouch End. Hello, Chris. Yes, hello, yes. Chris. Talking about the oh, London. No. Yes, the, Lon uh, the, the lovely buildings in London, the old houses. Yeah, now, can I just stop you there? All conversations with you always start pleasantly and, uh, you know, in a, a nice tone of voice, and within about 30 seconds, you're shouting at me about something that has nothing to do with what you started to talk about. Oh, really? I beg you, please don't use the word history, Hitler, or Elizabeth I. Oh, so, so isn't it funny? One, one can use rude words, and that's okay, but See? if you talk about Already. something she's, she's innocuous like history... Uh, anyway, the buildings voice is in London... Raising. Huh? I like the lovely old buildings in London, oh. and I don't like all these modern glass, many of them monstrosities, in yeah. my opinion. And one of the most beautiful buildings in London is, of course, the House of... Commons, the House of Lords. Houses of Parliament. Yes, exactly, yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. In short, yes. Mm. And in my opinion, <clears throat> because, you know, in this country, it used to be that the Queen, for example, Elizabeth I... Right, see, <laughs> Elizabeth I, already, you <laughs> made the mistake. It's one of the uh, words that I asked you not to use. But, well, I mean, I'm giving, as an example, I'm not going to... I, I didn't ring up... And you're starting to shout at me, Chris. I did not ring up to talk about her. Right, well, don't, then. But... It used to be the Queen, or the King, then the House of Lords, then the House of Commons. <clears throat> now, the House of Lords is a wonderful institution, because the House of Lords, uh, the people in the House of Lords are supposed to be the custodians of the laws and liberties of this country. Well, what's this got to do with nice buildings? No, I didn't phone up. That was just because the previous caller... Oh, this was a was preamble to your main complaint. Uh, no, well, I'm not... Well, I mean... You know, uh, so people can't um, say what... I tell what you what, like, a, like, a, like an essay, can you summarise what you're going to say first, then say it, and then give us a summary of what you've just said? And um, after your summary of what you're going to say, I'll decide whether we want to hear what you're actually going to say. So the summary is... The summary is that the, uh, the House of Lords does not need reforming, but even if they mess up the House of Lords, which they're trying to do, it's very comfort comforting to know that God is in control, that, you know, God doesn't change, that God has all the power. Is this a summary? A summary? Well, I mean, one doesn't usually start with pudding. 
one usually starts with the main course. I could do some pudding around about now. What do you think? Like some chocolate, uh, like a chocolate mousse. Well, hey, I could do, do the starter. Do you remember they used to, um, they used to sell chocolate yoghurt with actual hard chocolate on the top, as though the chocolate yoghurt had been exposed to air and, and the, the, uh, the surface had solidified. Sounds lovely. Oh, it was fantastic. That was going back to my childhood. And um, the idea was to break the hard chocolate on the top so that it would um, make in, uh, get into little uh, chunky lumps and you can mix it up in the, in the yoghurt. Mm, Thanks delightful. for reminding me about that, Chris. Of course. She's still going. Yeah. <laughs> this is LBC. The land. Talking of food, by the way, um, now, I know that when I'm in here, the cleaners come around about this time of night. Yeah. So, because I don't want them in here, because I'm doing a little show, mm -hmm. does that mean that this studio never gets cleaned? Not while you're in. But the cleaners only presumably come around now, right? Yeah, every single night. Right, so, they, so this studio never gets cleaned? N not really. Because for the last couple of days, I've been l looking, while I'm doing the show, at the detritus that has been left by whoever's been in, in here before. There's the same bit of bread... It, the desk that I'm actually using here looks like the floor of a restaurant. There's bits of food all over. With the addition today that somebody's coughed food onto the microphone, oh. and that's where it stayed. Is that uh, why you're sitting so far back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's properly horrible. I could Who, go and grab him if you... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we need a mop in here. <laughs> So John Humphreys has gone to the big, um, the, uh, the big peal of laughter in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it Johnny, man? What did I say? John Humphreys. Who's John Humphreys? Uh, oh, he's that type who, uh... Mastermind. Yeah, master something. Yeah, that's the one. Lower ground floor, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, I find him incredibly irritating, John Humphreys. He writes a good article. Why they're allowed to write articles, I don't know. There was an article by Jeremy Paxman in one of the newspapers the other day who was banging on about litter. Was it a regular column? Yeah, hey, Jeremy. Stop whining! <laughs> well, are th why are they allowed to write articles, being BBC News people? I thought that uh, if you were a BBC News person, that was the only thing you were allowed to do. Otherwise, uh, how can anybody take you seriously? Aren't they respected journalists as well? Are they? Um... News people? Yeah. I thought that news people just read the news. Oh, yeah, yeah, you think that they, uh, Hugh Edwards just comes in at, like, I'm sure he'd, well, five to six and... Well, if I was Hugh Edwards, that's what I'd do, because, I mean, he's, he doesn't write the news, does he? Yeah, he's got to write it in his oh, own words, doesn't he? Rubbish. They've got t hundreds of people, teams and reams of people at the BBC they have writing up the news for them. Why would the BBC waste I mean, you don't think Terry Wogan sits there and, uh, and, and speaks his own show, do you? That's not even him. No, his listeners it's email one in. His, one of his assistants. No, but the BBC wouldn't pay thousands on scriptwriters for the six o'clock news. No, they get journalists to do it. They're not scriptwriters. It's not a comedy <laughs> show, well, unless it's BBC Breakfast News, which uh, is uh, trying to be a comedy show. It's your favourite, isn't it? God, I hate them. But uh, no, they get actual proper journalists to write the news, and then some bloke in a suit and some uh, totally hot babe. It's always some bloke in a suit, some average-looking guy who you'd miss walking by him in the street, and some woman who looks like she's going to the opera, who's got way too much makeup on, and uh, and looks half the age of the ordinary average bloke who she's sitting next to. Mm. I'm uh, outraged on women's behalf about that, aren't you? It's a weird setup. It's like men can be uh, pudgy and um, plain-looking, but women have to be fantastically gorgeous to do the same job. Yeah, isn't that awful? Mm. Huh? <laughs> Brilliant. That's the American model, though, isn't it? That's yes, and the Americanization of British television is complete, which is a bad thing. They've even started... I mean, this started on, um, 
on satellite, and I saw it on BBC Two the other day mm. when I was watching Top Gear. I'm, I'm stunned that they uh, that they did this, and there must be some way that we can stop them doing this because everybody must be irritated as I am every time this happens. Not only do they crash the end of programmes and films, which is much worse, by telling by some Burke shouting at you ab about the programme that's going to come on next, mm. ruining particularly with films, ruining any kind of mood that they've got you into, you having spent the last two hours of your life, and they having spent a hundred million pounds on a film, putting you into a mood, and at the end of it, you're emotionally drained. You don't want some moron shouting at you <laughs> about the programme that's on next. You want to enjoy the moment, am I right? Yes. Otherwise, you're being yanked out of the moment, like, um, like a diver being pulled out from uh, the deep too quick. You get the bends. Mm mentally really yes I, it just infuriates me i hate it i'll tell you what does annoy me is actually when you're halfway through a film and the strap line comes up telling you what's on next instead instead of a voiceover yes well that's what i was going to say Th and and then because they the second a program or worse a film finishes they start shouting at you they don't they don't wait till the actual end they shout over the uh, the, the music over the uh, the end, you know, the credits. Yeah, because when that strap line comes up and it says, "Oh, on next, who wants to be a millionaire?" Yes. I start thinking about who wants to be a millionaire. Right. And, and do I want to watch that or do? Or Precisely, you I've lose concentration of what you're actually watching. And I thought that this was uh, r reserved for crappy programmes on satellite. Mm. But now they're doing it on BBC Two. I couldn't believe my eyes. Just before Top Gear ended, the uh, there was this bar over the screen that told me that told me what the next program was on bbc two give it a month it'll be on bbc one well if they're doing it on bbc two which is supposed to be the intelligent channel then they're almost certainly already doing it on bbc one mm. i find that an absolute outrage I'm, and i want to complain to somebody about it like i really do because it it ruins almost everything i watch being what? shouted at by continuity people who and it's, it's not good enough now that they that they just have people with nice voices. Now they've given the jobs to people who want to be comedians. Oh, truth! And they all sound like DJs. Hey, and, and they're trying to entertain us with a little with a little, few little seconds that they've got to tell us what's coming up next. It's absolutely insufferable. Well, you're I hate them. This on, um on a cable or digital provider or yeah. terrestrial. Well, Is without it? mentioning any brand names. Yeah. Sky, yes. <laughs> Is it them that put the... Uh, no, it wasn't. It was BBC Two. Okay, so it was definitely a BBC... Yes. ...sourced thing. I'm, I'm just outraged that they do that. You should write to Points of View. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> that'll work. Going. Yeah. Tay, Rog of Tay view. Rogan will read out your letter. He doesn't do that anymore. It's, um, <clears throat> they gave it to some guy who used to be uh, a really good news interviewer. And they stopped him doing it, presumably because he became less lovely to look at. It would be some silly reason like that, because he used to be really good. Yeah. And they didn't have a show anymore, and then suddenly he's doing this points of view thing, where you um, uh, write in and complain about some idiocy that you've just seen on their channels. And they get, they drag some guy in who's responsible. Yeah. And every week, every time I've ever seen it, somebody will have a... a a, a very good argument about why they've screwed it up and their response is well it's it's, it's us excuse me would you mind not complaining about us we know best <laughs> shut up and just sit down will you that's their response pretty much every time i mean they don't say those actual words but, that, but that's uh, that's what comes across it's like we know best stop complaining there's nothing wrong shut up we're the bbc we, we meant to make that mistake yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, it's infuriating. So they don't listen to you. They're pretending to listen to you, like the government when they had this um, uh, uh, the, the road pricing thing. You know, if you get a lot of petitions, mm. if you get a petition on, you get a lot of signatures. Then we'll really listen to you. No, they won't. They're pretending. It's just another exercise in pretending to uh, have a democracy. This has got nothing, nothing, nothing of the sort. I mean, how many signatures do they need? And they're still going to ignore us all. If 56 million people had signed that thing that they don't want road pricing, and if uh, 50, if the uh, entire population could get off its wobbly bottom and uh, stop being apathetic enough for a couple of seconds to actually decide one way or the other. None of us would want it. Yeah. 
And so let's assume that it's not 56 anymore, it's 60. 60 million people, including babies, <laughs> who can't even drive yet. They don't want it either. If we'd all signed it, they'd still ignore us. So what's Petitions the point? Petitions never work. Petitions never work, anyway. But isn't that... But that's the essence of democracy. If we all don't want something, then we shouldn't have it. Yeah, but there's... Yes? Mm, <laughs> there's, a, there's other ways, isn't there? Other ways of what? Well, is that the only way of, like, saying no, is, like, signing a petition? Well, you could vote them out. Yeah, but, but you, have then, to, you have to wait for that, don't you? Well, apparently so, yes. We're about to get a change of leadership without asking us, which I find is incredible. It's like we're like, like a, some sort of Soviet dictatorship here. They're about to change Prime Minister, and they're not going to ask us about it. Because, let's face it, people did not go out the last uh, election and vote for... Uh, Tony Blair or, Go or Gordon Brown when Tony uh, gets tired, did we? We went out and voted for the nice man who threw a smile on Richard and Judy and dropped his H's and mm. got all stops and told us that things were going to get better. Not some guy who chews his fingers to the bone and, uh, and, and has this dour demeanour. Tony's mate. Well, hardly. Wow. And so that they're going to change the and, and not ask us. I just find that stunning, don't you? I, yeah, I do. I, I thought there was going to be some kind of uh, general election. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if the prime minister changes, then because most people don't even vote for a party anymore, we vote for whether we like the person who's who's the head of the party. The reason we don't vote for parties anymore is because they're all saying exactly the same thing: that the NHS is safe in our hands. Um, we support our boys overseas, where the, your, uh, the pound in your pocket will be, uh, you know, as solid as ever, and then they'll just spout the same old guff, because that's what they think we want to hear, mm. and indeed it is. I mean, they're not going to say, well, things are going to be pretty hairy out there, actually, you're going to be unemployed for most of the time, and your house is, uh, houses are going to be uh, unaffordable, and uh, the entire country will be totally screwed. Vote for me. Of course they're not going to. They're not going to tell us the truth. They're just going to tell us what we want to hear, which is the same thing. Vote for me and everything will be fine, basically, is a, is a summation of that. And so because you can't choose between them, because yeah. they're all saying the same thing, we just vote for the, for the one whose face we like, we which need. is why nobody wants uh, Gordon Brown anymore, because uh, we just don't like the look of him as a nation. Really, do we? We need Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> that would be good, yes. I mean, he uh, he arrived as a bit of a joke in uh, California, but he th I think he's done uh, quite well. I say that, uh, having no knowledge of ca Californian politics. No, what's... But he, he's not a giant screw-up, is he? Well, we'd hear about it if he was. Yeah, exactly. So, um... We don't want Gordon, we want Arnie. <laughs> given the choice... <laughs> given the choice... We want him to, uh, you know, take over straight away. Uh, this is 8.15. Let's have some travel with Will Gowing. Thanks very much. If you're heading out to... Uh, Come on. Jessica. Yeah, hello, Nick. <coughs> excuse me. Yes, Jessica, how are you? Um, excuse you for what? Coughing. Okay. Yeah, it was very dry in here. It was getting to you yesterday, wasn't it, Alex? Yep. Got a mouthful of food. Okay. Yep. Um... Now, I agree with you about this celebrity thing. I've just watched um, Fame Academy does comic relief. What? Yeah. Um, as opposed to just hearing about it, I've just watched it. And Is comic relief on now? Well, I think it's a, a kind of prequel to comic relief. A preview? Yeah. Right. Um, <coughs> why would footballers think that they could sing? Why would um, it girls think that they could sing? Which, uh, which footballers? Um, Ray Stubbs. Ray Stubbs? I think so. Did he play football? Um, yeah, undoubtedly. Well, he can't sing. <laughs> and neither can Tara Palmer... Tara Farah, Lara, Wara, <laughs> Ole, Fatang, Fatang, Biscuit Barrel. I would like to propose a new reality show, and that's, like, voting out celebrities every month, obviously kind of ictus approving, um... Who shouldn't be allowed to be celebrities anymore? That's an excellent, uh, excellent idea. It is, isn't it? Because yeah. it's only us that are, p that are perpetuating this mess. It is. It's such nonsense. Um, 
Like every kind of month, ten celebrities are up for a victory. <laughs> yeah. Some kind of planet celebrity. And they will never be written about again. Yeah, we just vote one out and they're never allowed to do anything. They've got to go and work in a cafe. Jessica, that is absolutely fantastic idea. Yeah. I love you. It would work on Spy 2 or something, wouldn't it? Because the whole thing is just like out of hand. I know we're supposed to indulge something like Comic Relief because it's for a charity. But it's primetime TV. Is that the thing that Terry Wogan gets paid to do? Well, is that that thing? Yeah. Hang on, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of people who are very upset about that in the, uh, in the, uh, mirror. Some, uh, some letters in, uh, the mirror from people who are shocked about Terry Wogan's fee. I am shocked. But isn't it this thing about how celebrities are just kind of taking over the world? Even well, they're taking over the mag- the, the, the magazines and they're taking over our newspapers. Yeah, who buys these things? I you do. Things, yes, you I, do. Well, no, I don't, but I, I see these things and I wonder where these people come from. And when you see something like this kind of Fame Academy thing, you think, why are these people putting themselves through this stuff? Because they're just humiliating themselves to the public, which is... For money. They're doing it for themselves. money. Yeah, but I'd rather watch Lowe and Hardy at the end of the day. Well, yeah, of course. Mm. But uh, but whether they're doing it, whether they're doing the actual thing for free or not, they're really doing it for money. They're doing it because their agents, through hook and crook, managed to get them on that show. Yeah. But we've got too many celebrities. Correct. Kind of... Them out. None of whom I really have any idea what they do anymore. Like Lindsay Lohan, I've got. If you put a gun to my head, I wouldn't know who Lindsay Lohan well, was. I, think she's I read been, about her almost on a daily basis. I think she's been in a couple of movies. But right, name me one. It. I bet you can't. <sighs> See, um, she's fallen out of two or three clubs. Well, uh, and for, and her dress at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that might amuse some people, but I've I've really come to sort of tolerant zero on this kind of thing. I'd like to be able to vote people out, and I'd pay 25p to do that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think that's an excellent idea, Jessica, and if we patent it, by this time next year we'll be millionaires. Yeah. All right, keep thinking, Jessica, that's what you do best. All right. Bye-bye. Ta-ta. Yeah, here's just some, um... Oh, hang on. Where's the thing? Oh. I thought I was, go- I thought I was gonna have to uh, swallow that one. <laughs> Feeling better. Yeah, <laughs> much better, yeah. I was just searching around madly for that. <laughs> Why can't they put the the cough button in a in a better place? I thought you were going to make it. No, and I I thought my head was going to explode. If I had to keep that one down, I was going to have a small personal accident in here. You could have always dumped it. What? You could have always dumped it. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Here's a, a lot of uh, very upset people in the Daily Mirror about Terry Wogan. I am shocked, says one listener, reader, letter writer. To hear that multi-millionaire Wogan takes a fee to host children in need, especially as hundreds of other celebrities perform at the event without receiving a penny. I think Terry should pay back... Guess how much he's got from doing this thing? Um... £170,000. That's what this letter writer says. £170,000! How, how many years has it been going? Um... Has he been doing it since the start? I believe so, yeah. Huh. He gets... Hundred and seventy thousand pounds. I am stunned. I already got n- nine grand for the last one. Oh, Bigara! <laughs> <laughs> but he's just, uh, you know, he'll just bl- uh, bl- bluster his way through that. Oh, I'm, I'm a, a lovable feller, me. Oh yeah. <sighs> Hundred and seventy grand. So that the, the money that you've um, called in, that's gone. Has that gone to him? Is it from the same pot of money? If so, I am outraged. No, it's from the licence fee. Well, then I I repeat my answer I gave some moments ago. (laughs) At 68, this letter writer says, he thinks nobody can do his job better and won't retire. The sooner he goes, the better. Another one. I was a Wogan fan for years, but recently I started to see Terry differently. It was since he complained about Jonathan Ross's £18 million BBC contract, despite getting a huge pay packet himself. Did he really? Who? Did Wogan complain about Ross? how much money Ross was getting? Yeah. Good grief. Wogan, he, he, he managed just to struggle through a full two-hour show every day. He is a brave little soldier, isn't he? It's like I was saying the other day, he must have, like, a... a I've, uh, I, I know what it's like, uh, uh, over there. 
It's not like commercial radio. It's an entirely different world, as though it were a different planet. Really? They got assistance coming out of the woodwork. When I was there over there uh, last time, somebody asked me if I wanted a cup of coffee. Now, they had, at our expense, an actual cafe on each floor, tricked out with, uh, you know, coffee machines and leather sofas and the whole bit, right? Mm. Which was about ten yards from where I was sitting. Right. But that's not what she meant. She didn't mean that she was going to go to there and get me. She was going to leave the building and go to the cafe of my choice and buy me a coffee with your money. Really? Yeah, that was her job. Wow. Um, I could find a, a, a spare mug somewhere <laughs> lying around here <laughs> yeah. and go down to the second floor and... Yeah, don't bother washing it. You didn't do the last one. Uh, Wassie's salary didn't take anything away from Wogan, who, we now learn, is the only celebrity to receive a fee for doing children in need, says this letter writer. That's done it for me. Put your hands in your pockets, Tell, if there's any room. Here's another one. I'm not a bit surprised to hear that Terry Wogan is paid to host children in need. <laughs> I've always seen straight through his blarney. It's diabolical he has accepted a fee when other stars did not. If he's not... as, as, as if he's not paid enough already. And then one says, am I the only one who thinks Terry Wogan is worth every penny? Well, apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> He's brought joy to millions, including, allegedly, the Queen. What? None of the younger presenters, including Wassy, can match Tell's warm-hearted, easy-going manner. Ah, yes. Bland sells in this country like nothing else. White sliced bread. There's a fortune in it. Richmond. Hello, Alan. Hi, how you doing? All right, thanks. Anyway, Arnie. Arnie, yes. Yeah, he sort of came in as a little bit of a joke and kind of pulled his weight for a while, but uh, he sort of settled down not having to impress anybody, and he's uh, starting to annoy most of the community now in California. Says who? Well, says most people I know in California. And do you know uh, pinko, lefty, commie liberals? Mm, no, I just know run of the mill general people who live next door to me in California. They live next door to you? Yeah, I have a house over there. Oh, whereabouts? Uh, Palm Springs. Well, oh, right. Well, right. well, that's a that's centre for a commie liberal pinko. No, don't be silly. <laughs> commie liberal. For a start, he's, they were, like, San Francisco was one of the first places to uh, um, legalise and accept, allow uh, civil partnerships. He has now actually reversed that, that ruling. So he's offended the gay community, which, let's be fair, in California is a fairly large proportion of it. Um, and the little bit of irony that I find anyway, let's be fair, he's an immigrant who went to America and made it good, uh, happened to shack up with a Kennedy, which, let's be fair, will get you anywhere you want in America. Shack up? Well, he married a Kennedy, okay. Um, and through that, they actually changed the fact that you, you know, an outsider as such, uh, non-naturally -nat born American could actually become a uh, uh, in, enter into uh, Congress, etc., etc., and um, now his latest one, which I find a little bit ironical, bearing in mind he was actually an immigrant, as he wants to build a wall across the bottom of California to stop the immigrants getting in from Mexico. Well, an actual wall. Yeah, but I mean, um, they're, they're going to have to do something. I mean, if you if you go to uh, Los Angeles, the most I, I bet you the most popular radio station in Los Angeles is Spanish speaking. Oh, yeah, I agree, pretty much throughout the whole of California. But let's, let's think of it another way. I do not know. I know loads of Californians that will complain about the Mexican and plus and or immigrant population, but there's not one of them wants to mow their own lawn. Yep. There's not one of them wants to wash their own car. Correct. Not one of them wants to service their own pool, and not one of them wants to pick their own fruit. That's right. They had um, mean, uh, they had uh, a national strike of um, immigrant labor yeah, a little while ago, and, and, every, every, and nothing okay, got done. There is actually a big deal with, with pregnant Mexican women coming across the border, having their children, and their children are actually classed as American, and they're getting in that way, and that, that's kind of getting a little bit out of hand. But at the end of the day, without the Mexicans, they would have no labor force. I mean, it kind of bit me in the acid tad because I was looking in Spain and decided against it. I could get a better deal. I could get a bigger, better house in California in a gated community with a pool. I got a four-stroke, uh, four five-bedroom, 3,000-square-foot home for the price I could get a three-bedroom flat in Spain. Or a car park in London. Well, quite. 
Um, not a car park. A car park no, in no, space. Really, no. But I thought, hey, you know what? I don't have to look Spanish. And then it suddenly dawned on me, unless I want anything done in the backyard yeah. or the pool. That's right. And then you have to be Mexican. Well, uh, in, a, in a gated community, you, you, surely you'll have all that done for you. But the guy at uh, the uh, at the gate who's raising it, you'll have to uh, say. Oh, no, no, um, no, no, no. We, we we don't actually have a guy on the gate. It's Ola or whatever it is that you but say. They, it's, it's actually great. They deal with everything inside, but only up to your gate, your backyard, and your pool is down to you. Right. Okay. Well, uh, there's a lot of skimming uh, going going on uh, over at your place, and oh, don't yeah. don't let me uh, hold you back. Get off your ass. This is LBC ninety seven point three. International news is our job. Correct. Let's talk about migrants. Uh, there was a survey uh, a little while ago about migrants in this country, and migrant workers, it said, are not so much taking our jobs as doing them better than we do, the survey said. In a poll of 500 firms for the Institute of Directors, employers rated workers from abroad as significantly harder working, more reliable, and more skilled than we are. True. Why are you saying that with a question mark? It's the Institute of Directors said this. It must be true. Oh. You need replacing for a start. Uh-oh. Migrants were rated better by a large margin on their work ethic, reliability, education and attendance, while British workers were not rated above their foreign counterparts on any of the criteria used in the survey. We are rubbish. Isn't that terrible? We're just lazy, isn't it? Is that what it is? It's just laziness. We just, yeah. As a people, do we just, do we have this uh, attitude that the world owes us a living? Yeah. And we're going to sit here until we get it? Yep. That's terrible. Yeah. Why, don't you, don't you think that? What, that the world owes me a living? Yeah. And I'm going to sit here until I get it? Yeah. Well, yeah, pretty much, I suppose so, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, um, I did nothing for a really long while. After, uh, you know, change of management in the previous place. Didn't you get bored, though? God, no. Bored? Yeah. I would never get bored. There's all that great television to watch. I did nothing for, th I think it was three years. Wow. I had thought that it was two years. And I went, uh, the first time I came back on the air, I said, ah, oh, it's my first thing, been two years. And somebody called in and says, you know what, Nick, it's not two, it's three. <laughs> I've lost a whole year there. Wow. But well, I well, would never get bored if I didn't do anything for the rest of my life. How would you get bored? Um... I'm not one of those people that needs to be doing something all the time. I'd r much rather be doing nothing. Here's a perfect day. Get up, 8 o'clock, have breakfast, watch porridge. TV. Yeah, porridge and um, a cup of uh, lemony water. Mm. That sounds so weak, doesn't it? Yeah. But I had a near-death experience, so I smartened up my breakfast. <laughs> OK. And now my breakfast is that. And, what, uh, and now I have second breakfast about an hour later, which is all the things that I'm not supposed to eat. Or in fact, that anyone's supposed to eat eggs and now because yeah, you're starving. And, yeah, exactly. So after second breakfast, a nap. What? Of course, huh? And a nap. Yeah. Mid morning nap. Well, about twelve. About twelve o'clock. You need a good hour's sleep. Am I right? Because you've done nothing. Right. Well, it's very tiring. It's I find food, it, you? I find it more tiring to do nothing than to actually do something. It's, you just sort of, um, you have got no energy. That, that's because you your body's shutting down, probably. Well, you just, uh, you should always have a nap. I mean, look at me. I'm 86 years old. Do I look it? N certainly not. Look at Jeremy Clarkson. We're the same age. Jeremy <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Jeremy Clarkson and I are the same age almost to the day. He looks like my dad. Yes, because he... He puts himself in high-powered motor cars and travels, you know, 200 miles an hour. No, it's because he's constantly working all the time. I, on the other hand, don't do anything. Right. And I'll still die. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, migrants. It's, uh, they're, they're coming over here and they're taking our jobs, mostly because we're rubbish at the jobs that uh, are, are going. In every, re in, in every field and every respect, we're being bested by the people who are coming over here and, uh, and taking the jobs. Fortunately for us, they're coming over here and taking them, otherwise we'd still be a third world nation. If only we could get them to play for our uh, national football side, then we'd really be dangerous. <laughs> you remember winning at football, don't you? No. No. Here is one in the West End. Hello, Alex. Uh, hello. Alex. Uh, yeah, I had a nap today. It's the best thing I ever did. 
Right. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's it's so good for you. I feel I feel like I, I could destroy the world. You feel like a new man. Yeah. And uh, I uh, I phoned up before about the uh, the uh, the sats. The what? Uh, what the sats means. Sats. Yeah. And you know the exam. Yeah. Yeah, but I uh, forgot. So. Uh, uh, and also, uh, you know the uh, uh, the piano and the grades for the piano. Uh, okay, I was kind of lost the world to live for during the course of that call. I could uh, barely understand anything that bloke said, and he didn't seem to know what he, where he was going himself. Now I need a nap. him with a migrant caller. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, much better job. Excellent idea. Yeah, we only want migrant callers on this show now. They do a better job. Yeah, I mean that guy who called from America, for instance. He was uh, excellent. There's a guy just just from down the road in the West End. Couldn't understand a word he was saying. Amazing, isn't it? So anyway, back to this story that I was uh, saying at the beginning of the program about the... Um, I'll start from the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Parents are to be warned whether TV programmes, internet sites, films and video games are suitable for their children. Gordon Brown announced yesterday. Uh, Mr Brown said broadcasting regulator Ofcom had agreed to draw up common labelling standards to provide information to parents across a range of media. Manufacturers are expected to be made to preface their products with traffic light style warnings, detailing depictions of sex, violence, drug taking or the inclusion of strong language. Now, as a teenager, you'd want each of those in anything that you watch or see, right? Yeah, right. Well, so just that's... Not worth watching. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it's it's not so much a warning as a recommendation. Hmm. I mean, if you're tuning around as a 15-year-old and your parents are out and a, a thing flashed up on the TV saying the following programme contains sex, violence and strong language, well, you'd know that you were in the, in the right place. So this will go on every channel, then? Uh, well, let's see, shall we? The Chancellor said he was pro-family and pro-marriage. What on earth does that mean? And vowed to champion practical measures to support good parenting. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just comical, isn't it? Oh, I'm pro marriage, me. I'm pro. I'm pro the family. That's like saying I'm pro people. <laughs> <laughs> Vote for me. Um, people are super. That's that's my policy. If I get in, vote for me. Vote for people. Oh, I'm getting in anyway, whether you like it or not. Yeah, exactly. Uh. Some Labour MPs are frustrated that Mr Cameron has made the family a central issue since becoming Tory leader. Mr Brown's speech marks the start of a coordinated fight back. Gordon Brown is pro-people. <laughs> pro-family, <laughs> pro-people. This is what I mean by when I say that they all say the same thing, so it's impossible to choose between them. They're all pro-people. Mm. We like you. Exactly. Uh, the erosion of innocence is how the, uh, the I think this is the mail was uh, describing this. Some 42% of 10 to 17 year olds saw images of nudity and sexual activity on the internet in the past year. Is there um, sexual activity on the internet? Uh, somewhere. In 2005, Asda withdrew a range of pink and black lace lingerie, including a push up bra aimed at nine year olds. What? What? following complaints from parents and MPs. I yeah. never heard about that. I remember that. Youngsters playing the computer game Grand Theft Auto assume the identities of underworld figures and win points for crimes, including sniper assaults, chainsaw massacres and decapitations. Really? Yeah. Are you a gamer? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Do you find that uh, Alex is saying nothing? I'll assume that's a yes. No. No? No, I don't. Well, flight simulators occasionally but when i get bored after about flight minutes, simulators they're fantastic i like simulators. taking off and landing oh well as long as you learn how to land mm -hmm. well i might need it one day yeah <laughs> yeah the landing part's the important part otherwise i'm reporting i'm dobbing you into the coppers yeah but uh, don't you find that like just hour upon hour of uh, your life is just drained away playing a nonsensical game that isn't actually going to improve your life in any way shape or form no more than watching TV. Well, it's possible to actually learn something by watching TV. To be, um, you know, to increase the uh, font fount of your knowledge. 
Oh well, yeah, but with a computer game, you know, you learn you learn stuff like like um, decapitation reactions. Reactions. Yeah, you got to react quickly, haven't you? So you got to you constantly observing well, the like, surroundings, like driving. You mean, or walking down the pavement? Exactly. And why? But you don't even have to go outside to do it. You know, that's the great that's the great thing about it. Um, and then there's brat dolls which are marketed in fishnet stockings, hot pants, bikinis, sitting in hot tubs and mixing drinks. Hey, maybe that's how, um, uh, where, uh, Richard Maidley's daughter got her image from. You see pictures of her the other day? Yeah. Out with her dad, yep. looking like that she was. Um, young children are more likely to recognise the face of Ronald McDonald or the Nike swoosh than an image of Jesus. Jesus who? <laughs> Here is, uh, another one. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Oh, um, we took ages to answer the phone. I'm very sorry about that. We're very oh. busy doing a radio show here. But, but there's nobody on the radio talking. You are. I'm not on the radio. I think it's you. I'm trying to get through. And it, it, no, you are through. And you I'm are on the radio. Now. I'm through now. Can I ask you the name of the person presenting at the moment? You're talking to him. Another satisfied customer. Here is. <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> well, I mean, I said it three times. Send to voicemail answer. Oh, blimey. We had this the other day and I still don't know what that means. What does that mean? Um, you Make... choose one. Choose one what? You either. It's like a oh. computer game. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, it's just. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, Malcolm. Hello. Yes, Malcolm. How do you know my name? Oh, God. Stop this again. You're up here on our screen. OK, then. Well, I've got a couple of things. Uh, you can learn to on television. You can learn how to lose weight. You can see lots of little girls watching somebody red, red, red net or something go down to a size zero. They taught all these little girls how to do that, which I think is disgraceful. I thought she was doing it so that... in, in order to show that it's a bad idea. No, it, but then again, it, people say that they watch, if you watch, uh, play these games on, you know, these ga electronic games, you want to go out and kill someone. People can watch that, they can look at it and think, ah, if I do that, I could lose weight, I could look like that, I could go like that. And, th and she's saying, well, if you do this, you do this, do that, start doing this. So lots of kids have, gi they've given lots of children ideas, I think. Well, what's but, she saying? Just don't eat so much. I mean, how do you get to a size zero? Just... Well, the other thing is, you were talking about what you hate earlier on. Hate's a very strong <laughs> word. Oh, that's what you were saying on television. <laughs> I hate this, I hate that. I had to say, I hate you due to... Blabbering. You two hated. You cut out there. I hated you to what? Blabbering. Talking on. And right, on. well, there's several channels that you could listen to. Why don't you go and select one of those instead of listening, uh, continuing to listen to us and then calling us up? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. As though um, uh, the, the knob's fallen off his radio. People, I don't get them. I thought you were pro-people. <laughs> Not anymore. It's 8.45. Here's Travel with Will Gowing. Thanks very much. Well, problems as a war. Alan. Good evening, Nick. How are you? I am all right, thanks. I was just saying earlier that uh, as a migrant to this country of 42 years standing, I finally decided after being so ashamed of the two Scotsmen at the top of it, I'm leaving the country for good at the end of this year um, because I just believe that uh, it isn't going to get any better under Mr Brown. We're going to be even more controlled, even more spied upon and even more paying money. So where are you going to go? Well, I'm going to go and live in the Mediterranean in Cyprus, but I'm travelling the world anyway business-wise, so it really is a better place to be um, to get out to the Middle East, the Far East and also come back to Europe whenever I feel like it. Uh, import, export, stuff like that. That's exactly it. Um, and it's just a great shame because uh, had we not gone the way we'd gone with what Mr Blair did in Iraq and Afghanistan and what Mr Brown's going to do to us tax-wise and surveillance-wise, we would have stayed here. But I don't see any future, and I'm pleased that the migrants are coming in because a lot of the jobs they are covering, they cover well, and we wouldn't have people in this country do them. Isn't Cyprus going to be a bit small and parochial for you? No, not in the slightest, because I won't actually be living there all the time. I'll be travelling a lot as I have been for the last five or six months, which is why I haven't really been phoning in much. 
and presumably you, you'd be able to buy, uh, well, Cyprus for this for the cost of a small flat here. <laughs> well, yeah, you tell, tell your house in Surrey, you could have to buy a lot more for your money, that's for sure. You get a lot more bucks for your, uh, for your time. And it would be warm and you'd have a view of the sea and uh, yeah. rolling gre uh, the green, green grass of Cyprus. Yeah, 5% uh, income tax and 10% corporation tax and you don't get spied upon on everything you do. 5% income tax? Yeah, and 10% corporation tax. Well, form an orderly queue behind me. Yeah, it certainly should. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the news, Alan. Cheers, Nick. <laughs> Cheers. Take care. Ta Bye. Here is Colchester. Hello, Roger. Hello, Mike. Roger. Yeah, um, he was on about the BBC newsreaders. Why do they need two people to read the news for in half an hour? I've always wondered that. Why do they need yeah. two newsreaders to read uh, uh, both one, each half of one sentence? Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, it mystifies me. I think it's just some, it's, it, they just have the, the, the woman there as something to look at. Yeah, all right. I mean, you go back to the old days when, uh, ITN and BBC used to do news at nine, you had one bloke for half an hour and the other bloke for half an hour, and that was it. Yeah, it was grand when we were a lad, yeah. yes. The other, the other, uh, wins I've got, which is the same as you, um, but these... Idiots, after you, like you said, you watch a film, and then as soon as the credits come up, you get some jerk come over telling you what's on the next thing. Well, I watched Channel 5 the other night, and I was watching something, and I forget what it was, but as soon as the credits came on, they squeezed him into a corner. Yes. To show me a picture of what was coming on next. Right. right. Your time's in front of me. I know. It's, uh, we've got to do something about this, because they're... It's only going to get worse. They they started by talking uh, slightly over... Uh, the, the end of the credits, and then they moved the talking to the very beginning of the credits, so that as soon as the program finished, they would be talking at you. And now, they've moved it into the actual program itself, where they've got banners flashing up to uh, tell you what's going to come next. And they're only doing it because nobody's saying, "Hang on a minute, we don't like this. Stop doing it," because they're trying to hook us into whatever they're going to show next. It's an advert, so. There's got to be some way to convey our displeasure to these people, because I'm sure that nobody likes that. You know, you're busily enjoying Prison Break, or uh, some sort of, uh, you know, girly movie, and you're sobbing at the end of it, and then you've got some Burke shouting at you. It's infuriating. We've got to stop it. How? I don't know, you could write a letter, but... Um, yeah, f points of view. They would uh, listen to that just as much as they do that stuff. Nice cup of tea. Lovely. It's good, isn't it? It's, well, it's nice that uh, it just appears. All you have to do is ask for it. Wonderful. So, um... Betty. Hey. Oh. 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 oh, hello. Hello, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> this is LBC. You're on the air. Oh, is that Nick? Yes, Betty. Oh, um, well, I spoke to you Monday when you came on first. Oh, yeah. You know, told you I was disabled and housebound. Right. I been out for ten years. And I rang up my radio, you know, local radio, this morning. You, you know, they ask questions. And I said that we've just had children in need. Now it's Red Nose Day. Everything's going up. How do they expect old-age pensioners to keep give, give, giving? Well, uh... The, the gentleman that was on the phone said, uh, why about us? He said, why don't you go to the library? So I said, I've just told you I haven't been out for ten years. I can't walk. Why did he tell you to go to the library? Uh, to um, look up uh, uh, different things. Uh, and uh, so I said, I've just told you I can't walk. So I said, why is it that Everything is www.com <laughs> on your, on your, all the BBC yeah. and radio, Kent. Right. And I said, a lot of old age pensioners, like myself... Don't do computers. Uh, ...can't afford that, right. you see. So he said, well, you could go to the library, see. I said, don't you listen, I've just told you. I, I'm housebound. Yeah, what an thing. idiot. So he said, um, uh... I said, um, we, we all can't afford WW, why don't you put a phone number? So he said, um, 
If you can afford a phone, <laughs> you can afford to go on the internet. Slap <laughs> the phone down on me. Oh. I thought that was really rude. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Well, I think so, don't you? What a dope. Yes. Well, don't listen to them anymore. No, no, I won't. Well, I listen to you from five o'clock, you know, it's Steve, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's it, because I'm... See, I come to bed early to listen to you, you know, before eight, and then, of course, I'm awake early, so I then I'll put the radio on and listen to Steve. Don't you think it's bizarre that the older you get, the, the earlier you wake up? Because you'd think it would be the other way around, because, you know, the older I get, the more tired I am. Yeah, well, I mean... My doctor, I've just had this food poisoning. Now he says I've got something wrong with my heart. Oh, he blimey, said, oh, it's, it's all going off over at your place. He said, well, D Betty, you must... He comes and visits me every month. He said, well, Betty, you know you're getting old. So I said, well, I know if I'm still here in May, I'll be 85. But I said, Doctor, I never think about my age. If only I could eat and walk, I said, I'd feel happy. But my brain's as sharp as a needle. So he said, oh, you don't have to tell me that. I'm almost the complete opposite to you, Betty. Well, I can eat and walk, but my brain turned to a sludge years ago. Oh, does it? No. I can do countdown numbers before the clock starts. Can you? Well, you've got me beat. I can't even stand that uh, tune, let alone do the uh, the questions that they're asking. Oh, can't, I can... Does, doesn't that tune drive you up the wall? Da -da, da -da, oh, well, da -da, I, da -da. I don't... Do. Uh, uh, Carol Vorderman. I didn't like Des Lynham, but uh, um, Des O'Connor's a bit better. Is he? But I only like this. I really like the numbers because all those keep your brain going. Yeah, I think I'm a bit past that now. Oh. <laughs> but you are a shining example, and I will. Only young, though. Well, I like, yeah, I know. He's only thirty-three. Is he? Yeah. But he forgets everything. Well, but yeah, but he's a giant brain, though. He he went he went on um, uh, Mastermind and won, didn't he? Did he? I believe so. What was his uh, What was his uh, specialist subject? subject? Oh, the, the monkeys. The monkeys. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He told <laughs> the me. monkeys. Monkeys. Yeah, that's mind it. you, you've got to answer general knowledge questions as well, and I yeah, can't do those general either. General knowledge. There that's is no. Uh, there's no beginning. Uh, there's no depth. There's no bottom to the uh, the depth of my stupidity, Betty. Oh, I, I thought you were quite clever. Uh, no, that is an illusion. Believe me. <laughs> but anyway, I'm past the break. I've got to go. Uh, but it's, anyway, uh, I thought I'd speak to you. All again. right. Thanks a lot, Betty. Okay. What Bye. a nice lady. This is LBC. Meet. I enjoy working with people. Talking about charitable things, you know this uh, thing called Red? that Bongo from U2 has been banging on about. N never heard of it. Red? Yeah. Never heard of it? No. Do you get out? Uh, uh, do you read or...? Stuck in this place every day. Uh, are you? Yeah. Well, don't say it with, with, uh, so negatively. You mean you're enjoying being here every day? Yeah, that's the one. That's what you meant. Yeah. No, Red, you know, Bongo, the uh, guy with the sunglasses, permanently glued to his face. Yeah. Regardless of the fact that if you wear sunglasses indoors, you look like a dope. See Jack Nicholson at the Oscars <laughs> for proof. Even Jack, as cool as he is, looked like a total burke wearing sunglasses inside a theatre. Yeah, but it's all like big studio lights, isn't it, at the Oscars? It's all like really bright lights. Um, yeah, but everybody else seemed to manage okay. He looked totally happy to me. <laughs> <laughs> he looked as though he'd been happy in the limo on the way. Maybe that's why he had his uh, sunglasses uh, stuck to his face. This is just his trademark, isn't it? Um, no. Oh. Not in you cannot wear sunglasses indoors and not look ridiculous. It doesn't matter who you are. If Jack Nicholson can't get away with it, no one can. And Bongo looks properly silly all the time. So what's his red thing, then? This red thing, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I'll have to talk about this after the, uh, oh, yeah. the uh, new news, because it's coming upon us, but uh, the headline is uh, the star-studded red charity campaign was said last night to have raised £9 million to fight AIDS, uh, tuberculosis and malaria. £9 million. Well, that's good. Did Terry Wogan give his fee? Do you know how much the marketing drive cost to get the nine million 
OK, now pause for thought. Right. I don't want to uh, rush you or stress you out in any way. I know you're a delicate little flower. Mm-hmm. In order to fight all these uh, horrible diseases, they raised £9 million. To get that, they spent £52 million. On FM, on the... Nick Abbott. Groovy. I'm really liking the sound of that fridge. Doesn't that sound like all your dreams come true? I wonder how fast it propels the beer at you. Because if it's really quickly, you might be able to catch the first one, but after about the fifth, you'll be smacking you in the face. Maybe it has some sort of laser sight that will uh, watch the trajectory of the beer, and if it hits you on the nose, it will automatically call the ambulance. Well, Christmas isn't too far away. <laughs> what a depressing thought. Summer isn't too far away. There was a scent of it in the air today, am I right? The little birdies were chirping. Hey! Bumblebees you... the size of small cars were flying around. They were huge. Yeah, I saw a lovely butterfly. Sorry, What's yeah. that? A What's that? What's that, Mr. Man, whose job it is to control <laughs> the levels? Not... Can't hear you. Uh, I, I, uh, hello. I, I saw said a it. lovely butterfly. Oh. Is that it? Oh. Yeah, that's the story. Did you do any sunbathing then, Nick? No, I do not do sunbathing. I've got bright orange hair. I uh, avoid the sun at all costs. Should you go a little bit brown? No, I, I, go, I go red and then white again. I've never been brown in my life. Oh, sorry. If I drink a lot, I'll go... I'll be a ruddy red colour, ordinarily, without, uh, act, uh, you know, without the sun. But that's about as, uh, as, as, that's the extent of my tannedness. Mm. Sunbathing. I've tried it, you know, and I can do, like, toast. Kind of like toast. Or bacon, more accurately. Ten minutes on each side, and I'm done. Because it's just so boring, and it hurts. But like, anybody would want to do that for a long period of time, I don't understand. But it involves doing nothing, so I thought you'd like it. Yeah, but I like doing nothing in comfort. Right. Being in the sun actually is painful because you're sweating buckets and um, no, I, there's no, there's nothing fun about it. I just don't get it. How people can do that? Yeah, I don't like those beach holidays where people say, "Oh yeah, I'm going to lie on a beach for yeah. a week." I think, oh, I'm mystified, but exactly because you can cool down by paddling in the water and stuff mm. like that. When I go to the beach, I just go and I get straight in the sea, come out again, and leave. Well, it's no fun in that, <laughs> is there? I prefer not to even get in the sea. I'll I'll touch sand through shoes if possible, <laughs> but I don't want to be in any body of water that's not surrounded by tiles. Oh, you two are boring. Because there's things in it <laughs> that want to eat you. Yeah, or just. Ugh. What's wrong with you two? <laughs> <laughs> so, would you prefer to go on like a, a city break holiday yes, rather than a beach absolutely, holiday? Absolutely, yes. I prefer there to be no animals involved in my holiday. Swimming or flying or... And this is one of the reasons I prefer not to go to Australia. Thank you very much. <laughs> Too many icky things down there. Mm. I heard New Zealand doesn't have any, which is really bizarre, because presumably, uh, in days of uh, old, they used to be attached. Yeah. So they can't jump that far. Now. Yeah, but isn't it strange that, that all of the insects would have um, made... would have stayed on Australia and none went to the bit that became New Zealand. Hmm. Most it's almost, it's almost like watching the Discovery Channel, this show, isn't it? Well, it's the bigger landmass, isn't it? Well, what's that got to do with it? <laughs> more space to jump more, around. Yeah, exactly. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard anybody say. Isn't um, New Zealand more kind of mountainous and the terrain's different? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Right? Yeah. So... But they have species. mountains in Australia, mm. like the uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains. Oh no, they're Virginia. <laughs> they have the blue the Blue Mountains in Australia, just next to Sydney. Yeah, there are mountains there. Mountains, lakes, rivers. They've got the lot. And spiders that come up your toilet before you sit. Yeah, exactly. And snakes and um, things that f uh, that fly and bite your face off. It's horrible down there. <laughs> There's no end of Australians as well. Mind you, I've never met an Australian that I didn't like. They're earthy people, and, um, they like a good time. Hmm. 
You're not convinced? I I've never- never had any desire to go to Australia. Why not? Just- I don't know really what's there. Australia? I, I prefer to go to the- When you get there, <laughs> Australia is there. Oh, is it? Almost all of it, yeah. Wicked. Now, I prefer to go to the Caribbean or something like that, or go- you know, somewhere in the States. The Caribbean? Yeah. <laughs> Want to score some pot? Really? Yeah, for the beach is- You're a beach person? Uh, yeah. You're the whitest bloke I've ever seen in my life. It's because we just come out of February. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine you with a tan. Really? Yeah, you're like one of those people that hang around health food stores. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm the least healthiest person. Can I person. interest you in a vitamin? Um, I do take a multivitamin every single day, though. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Why? Apparently they will kill you. Didn't you read that article? No, I missed that one. Boy, you never reads the paper. Yeah, apparently vitamin pills are not not just that they're not good for you, mm -hmm. they're going to actively kill you. How? Uh, through science. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you asked me that question. <laughs> I can't remember exactly, but, um, beta carotene, that was one of them. That was in the headline. Beta carotene, you don't want to eat that. Well, I've got, yeah, some of that's in it. You don't want to eat, uh, E or C or D or any of those, uh, letters. Got all of them. Exactly, yeah. Oops. Oh, Mandy. Oh, Nick. How are you today? I'm all right, thanks. It was lovely today. You know what happened? I've got two things to tell you. I got in my car today at about half eleven. Yeah. And it was hot in the car. Isn't that great? It was amazing. And it's all thanks to global warming. Oh, the sun had been on it, and it was just, I didn't have to put the heater on or anything. Mm-hmm. It's such a nice feeling. Oh, it really is, yeah. There's no feeling like that. You can feel all the, uh, m muscles inside your little it's body relaxing. great. And then this will, well, it won't make you laugh, this is a horrible story. When I was a kid, my parents took me on holiday. It was in Mallorca. I think I was about six or seven, and they wanted me to learn to water ski. So, with a six or seven year old, they put you on a sort of square board. They didn't put you on water skis. Right? A square board? Like a board, and put your feet in these little rubber things. Oh, so, yeah. Well, wood skis, but just to get you used to holding onto the rope. And they start you in the bay, not out at sea. Right. So I was all excited. And the boat, the boat started to move, and I screamed. And my mum and dad were watching me, and I had an octopus wrapped around my leg. Oh, well, how big was it? What? How big was it? It was big. All right. Well, how big was it? It was big. They had to get. We're looking at ten inches. Something like that. Uh, no, it was bigger. It bigger was, than that. It was huge. The legs. It was just. They had to call someone to come and because they've got suctions on their feet on oh, their yeah. legs. Little suckers. Yes. Yeah, they had to get it off me, and then they on they got it onto the side of the bay, and they banged it out to kill it, and all the came out of it. It was horrible. Oh, nice. I never went more to again after that. It was horrible. Yeah, this is not something that appeals to me either, because it involves being on, uh, you know, water. I like water. Which has pool. things in it. The swimming pools. Well, yeah, swimming pools, but then of course swimming pools have things in it as well, because people have been in them. What would be better if, uh, like a bath? That would be a body of water that I would enter into. Yeah. A, fre a freshly drawn bath, but I'd draw the line there. Well, you put one in the garden, you mean? No, that'd be a silly thing to do, Mandy. Well, you can't have a bath outside. Well, no, I would I would like to have one inside. We've all got one inside, haven't we? Um, well, if you're lucky. Well, I have. What, what's... It's very n low water pressure, so it takes about an hour to fill, but I've got one. I, uh, in, in my last flight I made the mistake of um, choosing a, a, like a, a, some sort of posh um, Swedish tap thing for my bath. Yeah. And it looked very nice. And of course you can't test bathroom products before you nail them to the yeah. wall. When yeah. you go to the shop, it, uh, it, it might look nice, but you've got no idea how it actually functions in the real world. Yeah. And so, um, shower heads that have uh, water coming out like needles, and you don't know that, oh. uh, that that's how it's going to be until you, you put it up. Or it dribbles out like someone's spitting on you. <laughs> 
Uh, but the the bath spout that I chose was massively expensive and very nice, and it took. Oh blimey! You wanted to get ready for a bath. You'd set it off in the morning, and you'd go to work, and you'd yeah. come back and have dinner, and the bath would be ready for yeah. you. It took forever. Really? For all that money? But you got no idea until you actually buy it. It's an outrage. Was that not just the water pressure within your home? Oh, well, who are you? My plumber? No. Oh, no. Had nothing to do with it. Okay. Or maybe it did. I've got no clue. You know, you leave all that stuff to uh, to men. Oh, <laughs> you're a man. Oh, just barely, Mandy. No, you are. There's far too much. You know, there's there's three men on this show because normally I do a show with Lucy, who uh, you know cuts yeah. the uh, the the testosterone. But there's three blokes here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, fortunately, we're between the three of us. We're only just one man. <laughs> and who's that? <laughs> and no, if if you compiled oh, all three of us in a compactor, if yeah. you squished us all together, we'd make one Sean Connery. Isn't that awful? Can, can any of you change a light bulb? Light bulb? Uh, well, a light bulb I could just about uh, do, yeah. As long as it's not one of those bayonet ones. I can do a screw-in one. Yeah, screw-in ones are easy. Yeah. Anyone I can, can do, do that. that. Yeah. Um, can you change a plug? Well, see, now now you're asking me uh, one too many questions, Mandy. Let's stick with the light bulbs. Change a plug. <laughs> I can't change a plug either. Somebody, uh, like Lucy was going on about, oh, well, you know, if your, your car, of course, you should be uh, checking the oil level, and I'm like, what? Oil in the engine? Don't be ridiculous. If a light comes up on the uh, the dashboard there, then I'll know there's something wrong with it. Until yeah. then, it's, uh, you know, I'm full with you. speed ahead. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, I'm with you on that, definitely. As long as you've got a good car that tells you these things. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. you didn't fill your petrol up at Tesco's or Morrison's. <laughs> no. You want one that's bristling with lights. It's the most important thing to look for in a car. Is it? Absolutely, yeah. Like a Christmas tree? Yes. Why are we talking about Christmas? It's twice in the last ten minutes we've talked about Christmas. I don't want to talk about Christmas. We were talking about Christmas? Two minutes ago you said something about Christmas, and you said, oh, don't talk about Christmas yet. Did I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. That is awful. No recollection of that You've whatsoever. Got short term memory loss, haven't you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and okay. I think I know why too. Hey, listen, Mandy, I'm past a break, but I've got to go. Okay. Well, I'll see you soon. Ta-ta. Bye, darling. It's LBC ninety-seven point three. Here's travel with Will Gowing. <laughs> Thanks very much. We've just had. Right. So, what are we doing? We're doing Jill. Oh, Jill. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Jill. <laughs> Well, I think all the signs are there for um, the end of the world. Didn't they say that um, uh, things will be that there will be huge signs um, happening for the end before the end of the world? Also, it says in the Bible something like that. Well, you have set a trend, yeah. uh, Mr. Vegetarian Man, who now <laughs> eats meat. Mm -hmm. um, and a trend. Other, vegeta other vegetarians are following you. Are they? I'm. Uh, I'm on Sky News. And uh, the title of this article is Chicken Tikka Moosala. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. It was close. <laughs> but no cigar. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I can't believe what I'm reading. Um, this is a story from India. And um, uh, a farmer who has chickens, breeds chickens and cows, um, where is he? In uh, Chandipur, which is a village 145 miles South of Calcutta, it says here. Anyway, um, his name is Malloy, or Mooloy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's, call him, let's call him Mooloy. <laughs> What's he's got that? It's spelled M O L O Y. <laughs> anyway, um, he breeds these chickens and he's got these cows. Well, his chickens started to disappear. So <laughs> he stayed up and um, did a little bit of vigilant, vigilance and uh, discovered that one of the calves was coming out of its shed and eating the chickens alive. What? <laughs> the local veg uh, veterinarian was at a loss for an explanation. He says, I've never read or heard about cows turning carnivorous, <laughs> said Mr. Mihir Tirupati. You anyway. must be making I, that up. I am not. I am not making that up. Everyone, you can all go to Sky News now, and if you... <laughs> <laughs> and the title's brilliant. It's um, Chicken Tikka Musala. And then, and then the, the article underneath um, says more stories um, about cows, which it actually is quite topical because um, I think you mentioned that kids, um, when there was a questionnaire about where eggs come from, yeah. 
They said something about kids think cows lay eggs. Lay eggs. Isn't that incredible? So, I'm sorry. It's just, what's happening? <laughs> it's a crazy mixed-up world, Jill. It is. It is. Plus, um, burping cows wreck the planet with their Yeah, they do. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's the cow's fault. <laughs> And so you, you sprang to mind when I read, because I thought, oh, there's another vegetarian gone. <laughs> that, they must have that wrong. Someone's lying somewhere. <laughs> Cows don't eat chickens. Know, it's been filmed. It's been filmed. Um, what is it? Anyway, on here it says that um, they filmed the, yeah. Well, um, it, it'll be on local YouTube local before you know it. Debaji Chatterjee, who filmed the ex herbivore, I love it, ex herbivore, <laughs> tucking in <laughs> to catch the culprit. Well, I really want to see that. Up early. Go on to Sky, Sky News um, on the internet and but, you'll see the story, but it's just. Have they got the film of it? Maybe we'll get that eventually, but yeah. there's just a, a picture of um, a cow and a chicken next to each other, but it's today's story. Kids will be swapping it on their mobile phones um, <laughs> before you know. All right, well, thanks for the good news, Jill. You're welcome. And by the way, I just want to say one sort of thing to you. Yeah. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I love me too. <laughs> Here is uh, Tara. Good night. Here is Heathrow. Hello, Jerry. I'm Jerry. I'm on my way home and uh, in the car, and I'm on my hands free things, so having so kosher. But um, I, I sent a pill, really, for an invention. Yeah. Somebody could make themselves millions. Absolute millions if they was just to invent this thing. Well, I'm all ears. Right. Television. We all sit and watching the television occasionally, and you're getting into a programme, and then the commercials come on. And that the most annoying thing on the planet must be they increase the volume on the, on the commercial. Yeah, they do. I don't know why that is. Well, because uh, people get up when the commercials are on and go into the kitchen, so they want you to still hear the ads when you're in the kitchen. Exactly, yeah, that's the reason. But if you're living in a shared house, for instance, or it's late at night and you've got the television on, um, you know, it really is dreadful. Yeah, now, you're forever somebody... diving for the remote. Yeah. Exactly. You know, if somebody was to bring out a television where you could, you know, have an automatic switch where you could just mute the, the, or even something that fitted onto the television, so maybe there's an inventor somewhere, an electronic genius that could come up with a thing. Because I'll tell you what, I think every man and his dog would buy one. Well, actually, Jerry, um, they've uh, they've already invented this, but they won't let us have it. Really? Yeah. The um, I'm I'm sure I'm right in saying that uh, your personal video recorder, without mentioning any brand names, does have the ability to skip ads without you doing anything. But they won't put that facility in there because they don't want you to skip the ads. Yeah, it's a joke, isn't it? Well, because it's got to be the absolute, the, you know, the, the most annoying thing of all time. I say, I, I quite often, I'm chef work, and I come home sometimes very late at night, and I just can't just switch off just like that and go to bed. Yeah. So I tend to sort of watch television to unwind for half an hour or an hour. And the thing is, I'm forever, you know, grab, I've literally got to have the remote glued to my hand because mm. suddenly commercial comes on and blares the volume out, you know wakes up. And I think they had questions in Parliament about this a little while ago, and the uh, broadcasting uh, uh, company said, oh, no, we don't do that. No, no, that must be uh, your um, your imagination. We don't turn the uh, the volume up yeah. during the ads. Yes, yeah, you right. do. Liar! Oh, yes, you do. Anyway, it's, it's another thing we have to complain about. Thanks a lot, Jerry. Thank you. Good evening. All right, ta-da. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's true. We don't do that, do we? Everything goes out at the same level. Yeah, unless, sure Ale on the unless Alex is in charge. <laughs> in case it's all totally screwed up. Thank you. Yeah, this red thing. You've heard of this red thing, right, Alex? No. Oh, come on. They spent £52 million. <laughs> pounds well, obviously, didn't work. Adver well, they spent £52 <laughs> million pounds advertising the red thing. They got a red American Express card and they got a red iPod mm. with U2's songs on it. And red T-shirts from Armani, and red this, that, and the other. Why do they have to pick red? I mean, I mean who looks good in red? Um, no one. Bishop. Up. Huh? A bishop? Are they the ones that wear red? What? <laughs> Bishops? <laughs> or cardinals? Isn't it? Mm. So who looks good in red? No one does. <laughs> 
the he, uh, so anyway, they, uh, it, it, a big star-studded campaign led by Bongo from U2 uh, raised £9 million to fight AIDS and tuberculosis and malaria, and to raise the £9 million, they spent £52 million. That's just properly insane, isn't it? I mean, why don't they just give the £52 million? Exactly. Uh, the huge gap between the figures uh, brought concerns that the major brands involved are benefiting more than the charities they're meant to be helping. What a big surprise. Firms such as Gap have spent millions marketing red design T-shirts and other products. American Express has issued a red credit card and a red Motorola phone is also available. And a proportion of all sale proceeds goes to fight disease in the third world. Uh, Mark Roseman, a public service professor at the uni, uh, at uh, some really long-winded place in America, told the uh, a magazine that there are fears that global brands are using the cloak of supporting charity as a marketing tool. Well, I just assumed that that's what they were doing anyway. But then, when I thought bad things like that, I thought, oh, that's you just being negative. Why don't you give people the benefit of the doubt? Hmm. Of course, uh, you know, these giant global corporations aren't doing it just in order to... Um, greenwash themselves of course to make us feel better about their products they're doing it to help people mm. i thought trying to you know undermine my original assumption <laughs> which was all bad turns out i wasn't the only one who thought that way uh trent stamp of charity navigator which rates the spending practices of 5000 non-profit organizations in the us said the red campaign can be a good start or it can be a colossal waste of money it depends on whether this edgy, innovative campaign inspires young people to be better citizens or just gives them an excuse to feel good while they buy an overpriced item that they don't really need. Right. And I'm guessing it's the, uh, it's the latter. So, do they deem that a success, then, that they spent £52 million, like, setting it up and only raised £9 million? £9 million. yeah. Well, when questioned, they would say yes, because um, they would say that... Otherwise, we would never have raised the nine million. Hmm. And then I would counter with, "Well, why didn't you just give them the nine million, and then you could have saved the fifty-two million, and nine from fifty-two, as anyone with an A level in maths knows, is thirty-six million pounds they could have <laughs> saved." Yeah. What happened there? Well, I did my exams in Scotland. It's okay. a different system. Right. Fair enough. That explains it then. So, um, what's happening here is, uh, Ian Lee, uh, no one can actually get their head around this, but he has been invited to go and hang out with David and Victoria. Why him? Why not me? I pay my taxes, why can't I go? Um... Yes? Is that a proper question? Um, well, it's a whine. Not, 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 not so much a question as a moan. Okay, then. And he's going to be away until next Wednesday. I normally sit on Saturday nights between 10 and 1, which I'll also do. And um, I'm doing this until then. Come on, we're running light! We have another high-low auction. It's for a Sony PlayStation 3. Uh, you can't get these yet. It's not released. But you can win one today, and we'll get it to you uh, the moment it is. Uh, the high-low auction works uh, uh, like this. If you um, have a mobile phone, pick it up in your hand and uh, text your bid in pence to 88821. The word LBC followed by a space, then your bid in pence. So if you uh, bid 75 pence, you text LBC space 75 to 88821, and the lowest unique bid wins. So... Essentially, you could win it with one P, or whatever you think that other people won't bid on. Six P often is uh, something that people avoid for some reason. I'm forever getting um, uh, emails from um, a company that was, uh, form I filled out on a plane once, and they're forever giving me the results of um, high-low auctions, and 6p often seems to be the one that wins it. Of course, it won't now, because everyone will be bidding 6p. But whatever you think... For a Sony PlayStation 3, which comes out on uh, March 23rd, you can win one today. The auction ends at 11.30 tonight. The lowest unique bid wins the auction, and it's the lowest bid in pence that no one else matches by the end of the auction. Text the word LBC, followed by a space, then your bid in pence to 88821. 
before 11.30 tonight. Bidders must be over 16. Bids cost 150 plus your standard network rate. Bids are limited. See our website, lbc.co.uk, for full terms and conditions. Surrey Keys. Hello, Stan. Good evening. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. I'm enjoying your programme very much indeed. I always listen to LBC all during the night when I'm working. Good for you, mate. The other caller was talking about the video that can cut out the adverts. Uh, a machine that cuts out the adverts, yes. Yeah, when I, when I went to America, when I, I go to America quite frequently now and then, and in 1970, my sister had one that cut out the adverts. Well, what was that, then? It was a, a video system. It was a what? A video. Uh, like TiVo? Video. Yeah, but is it called a TiVo? I can't, I can't remember the name of it. It's like, um, it's a, a video that records onto hard disk, right? Like a Sky Plus system. Probably, probably was that. But she was telling me that the adverts come on without any warning and the, the little thing come up on the side of the screen that tells you when the advert is coming and it just automatically cuts out the advert and the film carries on. Isn't that brilliant? Yeah, it's been going on for a long time, but there's so mean no way they wouldn't do things like that. Yeah, well, like I said, I think they've uh, they've got one over here, but they won't let us have it. The, the, that's, that's probably true. I've well, never heard of it in this country at all, or in America. Uh, no, uh, we, we only have the fast-forward button. Exactly. And the ability never to watch anything live again. I always try and avoid it. All right, thanks, Stan. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, ta-da. Program. Here, Thank you. Th thanks. Here's uh, Tulse Hill. Hello, Chris. Hello. Chris. Yes. How's it going, Chris? Not bad, how are you? I'm very good. First time I phoned in, but I do listen a lot. Very right, right here. Just to explain, uh, I work in post-production um, with adverts. You did what? Uh, we're having a lot of problems with mobile phone reception this evening. There must be some sunspot activity or something oh. like that. Anyway. Any better? I'm moving around. That's a lot better, yes. Okay, so basically, um, when you make a, a commercial, it's like 10 to 30 seconds long. It's uh, when you measure the volume, it's measured through a PPM, which is a peak program monitor yeah so that and basically you measure so it goes as far as six on this monitor right uh so when it when you've got a film or hour-long program and then the commercials come on uh the commercial is going to sound a lot louder because it's mainly peaking at six whereas the the film or the program you've been watching as its, it's highest peak could be five minutes in or right at the end peaking at six so it's, it's not i don't really believe it's a a bit of a trick to uh, make you listen while you're in the kitchen. Do you understand? Uh, I understand what you're saying, but I don't believe a word you've just said, and neither does anybody else listen to this show. Come off it, Chris. Of course they turn it up during the ads. Well, really, they can't, because otherwise it distorts, and it will damage the speakers on your t on, on your TV. Just like uh, the, the, the picture itself is all measured so that it won't burn out the tube on your television. Not if they turn down the programme so that you would have to turn it up a little bit to get the same kind of volume. And when the ads come on, then it's peaking at the theoretical maximum before it distorts. Oh. That shut well, you up, didn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> OK, well, nice try, Chris. No sale. Oh, OK, dude. Thanks, mate. See ya. Hey, guess what's coming on TV? Oh, yeah. A new chat show. You know, uh, Michael Grage has taken over to ITV and he's promised us a lot of new excellent quality programmes. Mm -hmm. Guess what he's starting with? Of course, you can't blame him because this probably had nothing to do with him. Anything, any change that he makes will take uh, at least a year to come through because they don't just manufacture TV shows, you know, off the cuff. They don't uh, produce this, this quality of genius product uh, out of thin air. It takes uh, weeks upon endless weeks to create stuff like this. Guess what they're coming out with now? Go, oh, go on. Blimey. Will the pain never end? This is in the uh, mirror. Opeless, as in OAPless, idea from Grade. Now, I don't know whether it's his idea. A man's only just got his knees under the table. Can and he have made a decision this quickly? And surely it's not his job, is it? He doesn't make the final decision on every programme that goes out. Surely that's the commissioner. Well, I would think that they brought him in to do just exactly that. So to reinvigorate the channel. All right, but is he just commissioning programmes now? Is that all he does? Oh, well, no, but he tells the commissioning the commissioners what to do. I mean, they don't work in a vacuum. The uh, the big boss man will tell the commissioning editors what he wants. And previously, they've been told to only give the green light to something that has some sort of phone-in element to it. Of course. Hence, Pop Idol and uh, you know, all of those silly programmes. Hmm. When Pop Idol comes back, 
you know what? I think I'm. I think I'm. I'm over it. I'm going to wean myself off it because I've I've given enough of my life to um, uh, what's his name? Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell Productions. We've yeah, gi- you're giving the last what five years of your life to him? Exactly. Hour upon endless hour. What's he giving you? Nothing. Not even a, a bit of entertainment, really, because you only watch that show to see him shout at people. He, he passed your time, though, didn't he? Well, well, yeah, but wouldn't it? Wouldn't your time be better, like, reading a book, for instance? When was the last time you read a book? Uh, Probably about the same time as I read a book in school. Yeah, isn't that shocking? Yeah, aren't you embarrassed about that? No, I'm proud of that. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Chris has only read ones with cardboard pages. Oh. What's a book with cardboard pages? You know, like Spot the Dog. Oh, like, right. Um, with you now. Yeah, it's ones he can bite on and it won't, it won't get damaged. Uh, no, I'm not a fan of books because... It's, uh, what? Uh, words? Because Too many words I would in them? prefer to live my life and because I think I'm missing out. I'm, I'm spending too much time in a book, you know, I've, I'm missing out on stuff that's going on. Oh, well, you want to continue with the the exciting activities that you normally fill your day yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to miss my favourite TV programme. Yeah. Well, I'm with you there. I would rather watch TV than do anything, really. And also, uh, the only time I would have to read a book is, like, on the tube or, in a you know, on travelling in a car or something like that, but I always get motion sickness from reading, so... So Even on the tube? Yeah, if I started... You get motion sickness on the tube? If I started reading, I'd get motion sickness. I'm all right if, if, I'd, if I'm not reading. What are reading. you, 12? No one gets motion sickness on the tube. No, but if I'm reading, if I have to concentrate on one thing, then I will start to feel a little bit sick. <laughs> Depends how much you've drunk now, so yeah. No, it, well, it, it, you know... That's the f- you're the first person I've ever heard gets motion sickness reading on the tube. I and mean, that's what you have to do on the tube, because otherwise you might accidentally look at a fellow passenger in the eye. Oh, God forbid you do that. Well, exactly. That's why these free newspapers are like manna from heaven, because they're s- they are, crucially, stapled together, so you can, with one hand... Um, well, I guess you can't change the page with one hand. That would be uh, a trip too far. Mm. But when you turn the page, you don't lose it all and uh, get embarrassed in yeah. front of your, you know, fellow commuters. I just read the adverts and study the tube map. That seems to pass the time. If you look at the tube map, well, I always think if I'm looking at the tube map, then I look like a tourist. Because <laughs> as a Londoner, I should know where I'm going and not have to look at the tube map at all. But you don't care what other people are thinking, do you? Yeah, of course you do. That's that's the main place where you care, because you're stuck in this little Tube. pan, and everyone's studying each other. Yeah, but you don't care about making whatever. instant decisions about each other, mm. depending on how they, well, what kind of shoes they're wearing for a start, how they're dressed, how they look. Whether oh. they might stab you or not. <laughs> those sort of they things. I'm missing out, I think. Talking to themselves. <laughs> but this is why people want to read, so they can avoid making eye contact with anyone around them. Because the tube is like the is like being in a lift. Mm. It's slightly more embarrassing being in a lift. Yeah. Because yeah. in a lift, you can't really open a newspaper because it's going to be a very short journey. So you're forced to pretend as though you're fascinated by a mark on the ceiling or the buttons that are lighting uh, the different floors <laughs> but I on a tube that's why these uh, these free newspapers are yeah, perfect because they last as long as a tube journey does unless you get screwed over by london underground again yeah and uh, you know your journey becomes a nightmare yeah or unless you've got motion sickness you're screwed. No one gets motion sickness on the tube. I bet they do. I bet they do. I bet you there's one. I bet you there's one other person out there who gets motion sickness it's on the tube. Million. Yeah. <laughs> it's pathetic, isn't it? This is, um, you know, it's a show uh, that's got three men on it, but there's uh, not a man among us. Weak. <laughs> Very poor. Yeah, the poor show tonight. <laughs> Here, it, yeah, here's Bolton. Hello, Tam. Hello. Um... Nick, um, very amusing show, by the way. 
Um, it's just about the tr the, the um, reading books on the train. Yeah. Um, I like reading books, but I only enjoy reading them when I'm going on a journey. I don't like go home after a hard day's work, a uh, hard day's work at school, and then open a book and spend the next two hours reading. Because it's like, it's too much like work. Uh, not necessarily. It's just a case of, I'd rather do more, it's more entertaining things like watch rubbish on telly or, um, go out and play football or something, you know. You, you read a book to pass the time when you can't do anything better. Um, do, do, do you agree or? Like, well, I, I agree, but I'm ashamed that I agree. Yes, I want to read books. It's the actual reading of the books where I, uh, where I, I, I come a cropper. I just... You should read at least, I'd say, you should read for at least half an hour a day. And, that, and I mean... Do, well, does that include newspapers? Because I do no, that. No, not newspapers. You should read a good, good fiction. A good fiction book. Maybe a bit of John Grisham, um... Go to your local library. And John it. Grisham. Yeah, I'd rather wait till the film comes out. No, you see, that's that's terrible. I can't believe you're saying that. I mean, well, it only takes two hours. See, reading a book takes ages. Yes, but you get an incredibly reward. Actually, now, you, you when you read a book, for instance, um, I've read a book. When you read The Shawshank Redemption, the book. Yeah. Right? And then you go and watch the movie. Mm -hmm. You think I thought to myself, "Gosh, the mo the book is so much better at conveying the emotions of." Yeah, I'm sure it does. But but you've you've watched the movie in two hours. You've done it already. Yes, but yes, whereas but the uh, movie just I'm barely past ten pages in two hours in a book. Yes, but the movie can't carry a candle to the the book. That's what I'm saying. The movie's being shortened and commercialised and mm -hmm. sanitised. Yeah, and, and the book is in black and white, and the movie is in full colour and surround sound. But when you... Let me tell you something. When you're really into a good book, and you're in there, and, you, and you're turning page after page after page, you... The experience is far better than any movie. I'll tell you that. What, even Apocalypse Now? Uh, well, I'm watching that at the moment. Um, you're watching Apocalypse I, Now right now? No, I'm watching it in, in my English lessons. What? <laughs> I'm watching it in my English lessons. You're watching Apocalypse Now in your English lessons? Yes. Yes, I am. Do you want to know why? Uh, well, I am keen to know, yes. Because we're studying a book that, that Apocalypse Now is based on. Right, Heart of Darkness. Ah, uh, well done. You know, see, you know your books. You know your books. And stop pretending you don't like reading books, because nobody who watched telly all the time would know that, Apo that Heart of Darkness was the, the base for H Apocalypse Now, unless they knew something about books. I think everybody knows that, don't they? Um, uh, yeah. ask, Chris, ask Chris if he knew that. Hey, Chris, did you know that? No. See? Well, <laughs> he, he's, he's no j judge. No, Chris, it's a stereotypical... <laughs> British person in the street. Yeah, see, that's you, that is. Whereas me and you, Nick... I know, we're genii. We're intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but only in comparison. Hey, listen, Tam, I've got to go. Best of luck with your studies, all right. Thanks, Nick, bye. <laughs> if, that, if that's what uh, passes for studying these days. And remember, Charlie Don't Surf. Here's Travel with Will Gowan. <laughs> Charlie Don't Surf! I love the smell of porridge in the morning. Smells like boiled oats. Hello, Sarah. Hello. <laughs> Sarah. Hi, yeah, you're right. I am all right, thanks, yes. Good. Um, I get travel sick on the tube. This is... Uh, I've never heard of such a thing. How I can you get travel do. sickness on the tube? I get really, really bad, and it can be a bit embarrassing. Cause, uh, not embarrassing, but I really have to, you know, take deep breaths and sort of hold back, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and I get really the worst is the DLR because I live right right next to it. Oh, the yeah, uh, the the, the, the comedy just, cartoon rail network. Yes, it, oh, it just makes me sick. I hate it. I hate travelling anywhere. But at least on the DLR, you can look out the window. It doesn't it uh, doesn't it cure itself when you can see the horizon? Nope. Huh? Nope. Not at all. Anything, oh, I get travel sick, and it's getting worse as I get older, and I'm only twenty one. <laughs> but I thought this was. Um, this was a thing that children had. No. no. Maybe I haven't grown up mentally. <laughs> Maybe that's Chris's problem. <laughs> oh, what? you're mean to him. He's not that bad. 
I didn't know about the book. Oh, about Heart of Darkness. I didn't have a clue. Well, I don't think it had to be a giant brain to know um, that. It's just one of those things. I mean, you uh, almost certainly know a lot of things that I don't know. Probably, but... Oh. Anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd bring up and tell you, because, um, yeah, it, it does happen, and it uh, happens a lot to me. All right, well, if, if you ever... see me, don't ever sit next to me. <laughs> no, OK. Always be wary of the follow-through. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. Cheers. Here's Kingston. Uh, Phil Berto. Phil hey, Berto. How are you doing? I'm all right, thanks. Nice. Uh, but I, I know about um, Hearts of Darkness, Conrad, Apocalypse Now. I knew this, so you know, English isn't my first language, so and even I knew it. It's not See? The big one. He, not he the big barely one. speaks English and he knows more than I do. Uh, also, about the uh, reading, you know, I, I read on the tube and eat at the same time. I've got no problem. I don't know what they're talking about. You read and, and eat on the tube? Read and eat. And you know, I smile at people as well. You know how many times people smile back at me? Zero. Unless they are children. Right. Okay, and also about reading. Meanwhile, their parents are frowning at you. <laughs> no, do you know what? Do you know what? Sometimes, you know, because I love children, you smile, hello, and you make a little face. And, you know, but apparently, parents never like this. They always smile back at you because, you know, they don't, it's not, if they think you are a pedomaniac to have a look at the guy smile and make the kids smile, it's stupid, you know? Right. I don't know. Uh, but talking about the reading as well, uh, I read on the toilet all the time. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad you brought that up. No, but the, you you must do as well. Well, yeah, you've got to take your mind off it, haven't you? I don't know. It's In order to achieve full re relaxation, yeah. Sometimes it's the most private place um, you can go, just to shut the door... And everyone else has gone away. Well, I'm not in there reading chapters. It's just a small news uh, story. I mean, I'm in, the, I'm in and out, you know. You, you, oh, you don't take your time? Well, no, I'm not in there like with, with, a, with a blanket and a, and a radio and soft lighting. No, I well, just I'm get in there and... the radio and soft lighting, but... I spend you know, as little I'm time not... as possible in there. Because sometimes I'm there for one hour. An hour? Yeah, I'm reading a very good book at the moment. <laughs> um, and today, I, I was doing some writing. And I went in, I was there for one hour. I maybe read, uh, I don't know how... Oh, he got cut off. I think he probably died. Maybe he was calling us from the toilet. How does he stop his legs going to sleep? Well, <laughs> also, you shouldn't, you really shouldn't sit on the toilet for an hour, because... Can't be healthy, can Well, it? no, you, um, I don't know what the medical term is, but, um, you the, you the world falls out of your, um, you know. Yeah, it's... Germs, isn't it? Well, you should be there for as little as possible, I think. Just get the job done and then leave straight away. The guy's setting up camp in there. <laughs> Aren't there other people that have got to use that loose? Well, you would think so, eventually, yeah. It's mm -hmm. like women. Women seem to spend an in, uh, the longest time in toilets in public. They go in there in packs. What, what is that about? Men, meanwhile, go in there and spend just en enough time to urinate pick their nose and wipe the bogey on the wall. Yeah. Can anybody explain why men do that? I've never seen a man wipe a bogey on a wall. No, but you've seen the results, though. Yeah. That is the most revolting thing in the whole wide world. Why do we do that? You disgust me, Alex. You can see me. <laughs> you, I'm to make sure you make no eye contact whatsoever as well. Well, is yeah. I th or, or, or contact with your eyes with anything that's anything. in there. Anything. Yes. Just look, look, look straight ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, at all look times. Up. Look up. At the bogeys. <laughs> no, but that is, isn't that properly vile? As though, uh, as though the two things go together. It. Urinating and nose picking. That's just... Uh, I could never get my head around that. Well, you do have a spare hand, don't you? Oh. I think women go in to do, read, apply their makeup, don't they? And, uh, and have a, a, a gossip. A natter, yeah. Meanwhile, when was the last time you had a gossip with a bloke in the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> I've, had a, I've spoken to the bloke in the next cubicle if it's been, <laughs> I've been really drunk. That's quite funny. You just shout over the top. Really? Yeah. I've never done that. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. you talked about what? I mean, the only, the only conversation that would be acceptable in my mind in that circumstance was if, if you'd run out of paper <laughs> and you were asking for some. <laughs> I mean, what were you talking yeah, about? Fair. The latest football scores. I don't remember the last time I was. Oh, that's a nice pair of shoes, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything <laughs> off him. You can just uh, hear him... Oh, so you didn't, uh, like, take a mirror in there and... Uh, uh, under the door, yeah. I think. No, no I just, see. Just, like, 
he, he might have said something, like, in a drunken way, and I'll reply for a laugh. Why are you in the cubicles? Because there weren't enough urinals. Oh, I see. To go around. Mm, right. Oh, well, Does you that... know when there's more than, you know, say you've got three urinals and there's two blokes there already, it's, you, you, you're not allowed to use the centre one. Oh, yeah. Mm. Absolutely. I prefer using the cubicles anyway, because it's just a bit more private, isn't it? Like I said before, you could squish the, all three of us together and you wouldn't come up with one man. <laughs> what a pathetic show this is. <laughs> I'm ashamed of us. <laughs> I, I found out a disgusting thing about urinals, by the way, which I have not previously known. And I, uh, it's only because of the exact position of the one that, I, that I'd used that I, I discovered this, because um, I've never seen it either before or since. Hmm. And I will share that with you when we come back. They've always been independent, my mum and dad, but... Now that they've retired, money's a wee bit tight for them. So normally, you're um, enjoying a urinal in a darkened atmosphere that has no windows, right? Mm-hmm. But naturally, because you don't want uh, people from the outside uh, resting their gaze on your business. No. So they're normally windowless rooms with the light behind you because you don't want it spotlit, so the light's normally in the middle of the room, which is off, which is behind you. Therefore, what you're doing is in shadow, correct? Correct. Well, this one time, I uh, was in um, an office building, so it was, it was very high up, and the window was uh, a low window to the floor, to the side, and it was, it was frosted, right hmm. enough, but the sun was streaming through, uh, so that it was at the side and in front of me. Oh, and what I saw was that there is no part of your ordinary everyday urinal that you can aim at that doesn't produce a fine mist of product that wafts back onto you. Oh, uh, really? So every time you go, mm. approximately 10% is you are, you are bathed in droplets. In droplets of, of approximately 10% of what you produce, it, which which covers almost your entire being. But that must mean, because they put urinals so close together, if you're <laughs> going next to someone, you're yes. getting 5% of his. Exactly. Oh. It's another excuse to use the... Uh... To, the use the, uh, to use the booth, that's yeah. right, because that's an actual proper toilet that doesn't have so much splashback. Okay, so we're all going to use a cubicle from now from on. From now on. Well, I'm not- I'm never going again. <laughs> <laughs> Clive is next, and his show will be a lot more seemly and manly than mine. <laughs>